Hey everybody, I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we have our top 23 of 2023. That's right. Wow, we played a lot of games. That's right. So making uh, narrowing this list down can be a challenge. Yep. But I, I think that you have something to tell everybody out there who does their top games of 2023 in early to mid-December. No, there, you still have tons of time. So you have yeah. to wait till the year is over. I mean, point point. Michael has one of his games that we learned on December 30th on this list. So yes. There's always time. This list. There's always time to learn another yeah. game. If you're putting out your top list, you're wrong. Or, you, or you're not playing enough games, you know who you are. <laughs> well, for me, I ended up learning 650 games. I played 910 uniquely named games, and I played 1,915 games total. I played that in 2023. That was probably my best year that I've that I have since I've started keeping track. That's like, great. that's 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 some crazy stats. <laughs> so, and I'm already at like 42 plays this year, which is it's been. Two days. So I had Three days. <laughs> I had more new to me games in 2021, uh, but not more plays of games. Okay. Um, I I had barely more in 2021. I had six six. I think six ten or so. I'm at five ninety one. Okay. This year. So what? Only what? Fifty less than sixty less than you. Yep. So not too bad. Nope. Um. I had 703 unique games, meaning 100 or so were games I had played before. Most of them on January 1st. Uh, <laughs> because we do the alphabet challenge every year. Alphabet challenge. So. And we do it on January 1st. And we do hard mode with a number and then followed by the alphabet. Yeah, meaning we do a game like Seven Wonders. And then we do an A game. And then we do a B game. Yeah. And then we do a C game. It's, all the way to Z. It's been a fun tradition each year uh, for the past three years now That's so right. um and and 1201 total plays so that was that's that's pretty good for this year it's the most total plays that i've had um that's really good so i only have 27 plays for 2024 well, but yeah. hey that's 27 plays right i went to a game night last night and we started my city and we're playing through some some other quick games so it was good so we have our 2023 championship that we did in 2023, which we do January 1st, in which I won eight games. Yep. Steph won seven. Susan won seven. James, poor James, only had four. What happened, James? But there was a big comeback this year. There was a big comeback. Okay. This year, I had six wins. James had six wins. Steph had seven wins. And Susan... Also at seven wins. Congratulations to Steph for being the 2024 champion <laughs> for our alphabet challenge, which we are keeping track of. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> anyway. It's official. Hopefully you guys have some enjoyment for your January. Start new stats. Uh, we love keeping stats on uh, the BG Stats app. Yep. And so it's always good. And so. yeah, I highly recommend it. And if you do keep track with the BG Stats app, it will be so easy for you to join our 100 by 100 Twitch Community Challenge, which we've done in 2023, which if you've still got your stats, you can still add your stats. <laughs> and maybe we'll hit that 100. We did hit 62 games hitting 100 plays. Uh, well, especially considering the last week of December, we were at 25 games Yeah, that had hit 100. Yeah. We pushed 40 games over the top. Amazing. So that's like fantastic. Yep. Um, but we're going to now keep track for 2024. If you've played a game from January 1st to December 31st, 2024, then you can enter your stuff. The spreadsheet's not quite ready yet, even though someone's already created it for us. I do have a lot of tweaking I want to do for this next year's worth of stuff, um, but you are free to join into that. And hey, if you want that, join us on Twitch. Yeah, if you want that link, join us on Twitch, and you will get that link. So, and one more thing one before more thing. we start, <gasps> I have to talk about my 2024 gaming calendar. There you go. You threw it at me the other day, so it's somewhere. That's right here <laughs> under the table. Boom! Yay! They are now for sale. Uh, 
Steph's um, shop with two S's in the middle. Steph's shop dot company dot site. You too can grace your walls of your game room or office or uh or refrigerator or whatever with this fantastic calendar. Yep, I love it. I'm biased though. And if you're not sure what games these are, it tells you up here in the corner. Yeah. So beautiful artwork. Uh, all everything done by your photography. So Steph takes all of her own pictures as she is a photographer. photographer. Support your favorite uh, game streamers and game photographers. That's right. Much, only much appreciated. Only fifteen dollars. Yeah. On Steph's shop dot company dot site. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the showing that. Yeah. So I think we we can jump into this. Uh, we're not going to get into too many mechanics or anything about the game. We're just going to say some things that we love about each game and, you know, when we hope to play it and all these. Just, we have a lot to talk about. Yep. So Now, before I go into everything, most of the games, but not all of them, were provided to us by publishers. Uh, if we forget to mention, we apologize yeah. If you want to assume that the publisher gave us all of these, go ahead and do so. Yes. Um, though I do have, let me count, one, two, three, four. I have six of my top 23 were not even provided to us for free. So yeah, Three of mine weren't. And three of yours. Uh, and that said, we, we will probably be given at least one of these. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. By by publishers and, at some point yeah. but we have played them and they did make our list yeah so, absolutely uh great games that yeah. we have to talk about here so let's get right to it so my number 23 game of 2023 i should say we actually did have a couple that barely missed our list both of us had mortem uh medieval detective at right off of our list yeah uh, both of us had Miller Zoo barely off of our list. That's true. Um, both of which were probably deserving of being right around that zone. Yeah, I think. Um, I also want to mention that not all of these games were released in 2023. Yes, this these are games that we learned in 2023. Uh, one of these games was released in 1975 with a new so, with a new edition with a new edition, but, but still, yeah. Um, so, uh, but taking a quick glance, most of them are 2022 and 2023. Yeah. Um, however, uh, and if these are not yet available, they should be available very, fairly soon. Yeah. Um, so let's get right to it. Number 23, uh, is fiction from all play. This was my number one game of July. And, uh, in this game, uh, one person is going to be the librarian, <laughs> ah, and basically going to have a uh, a what is it five letter word, and um, the other players are going to try to guess, sort of, kind of in the same vein as Wordle, and so uh, at, there's going to be uh, at one thing that the librarian is going to lie about, um, so. Uh, if you are a fan of word deduction games or a uh, little uh, secret sort of, uh, you know, if you have a, a sort of like a, if you're a fan of trader games like I am, then this is definitely something that you should check out. Yeah, uh, it's in it's in their small box line, which uh, all play had a fantastic booth. At Gen oh, Con. Yeah, they, they have a great setup. Yeah. And it had little squares that were the size of their game boxes, which are about like this. And. They just clever. filled up in all of the little holes, and you take a game from it, and it would. Yeah, it's an automatic. It. It's yeah. so good, so smart. It's, it's smart. Yes, they did a good job. So, uh, definitely check out Fiction by All, which is provided to us by All Play. Yep. All right, my number twenty three is Vegetable Stock. Now, this is from Good Game and Taiwan Board Game Design. It actually came out in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, this was. In my February month, it was number three on the list. Very cool. This is such a small game. It's It, it has no right being as good as it is. <laughs> it is a simple market game. You draft a card, whatever card's left over, it it, it shifts the market. 
And uh, it's it plays in like two minutes. It's like a very fast game. Well, maybe not two. I played it with two minutes with two other people on my Tuesday group. That's ridiculous. I know. Uh, anyway, it's it's like a five minute game. You can play it on BGA too. So you can check it out there. I love it. And it was part of our alphabet challenge this year. Yep, we played it. I played it. It's awesome. Yep. I, I, and I, it will be forever in the quiver because it's very small and it's a really good filler game. I mean, it just is. So. Yep. Brilliant. And so uh, that was your number 23. Yes. My number 22 is a, actually a game that I want to check out on uh, digital. Oh, yeah. Because it follows some of the same sorts of things. Yeah. And I want to play the rest of it. Because we've only played the first few scenarios. Yep. It's Dorf Romantic, the board game from Pegasus Spiel. <laughs> uh, this was my number three game in April of this year. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, and just let me let me mention, just because it was my number three game in April, just because I say number three in April doesn't mean that number two and number one are definitely there. Oh, yeah, mine Some are of these games scripted. might have... Like, I have a number... Uh, what is it? I have a number eleven game that jumped up on to, onto this list. Wow, eleven in that month. Wow. So yeah, because I've I've played it several. I've played these some of these games several times, and it's just like really okay. fantastic. So Splitty says he is Dwarf Romantic on Steam. So I do actually want to play this some more. Um, basically, uh, draw a tile, place a tile cooperatively, mm-hmm. trying to. Uh, get through all of the stack of bonuses and so that you can, you know, best optimize your stuff based on the number of points you get. You're going to be able to mark off things legacy style onto uh, uh, onto a, a map of sorts that will give you special abilities. Um, but unlike legacy games, this is infinitely replayable. Once you're done, I don't see why you could not play this multiple times. Yeah, so I have not sure. made it to the end. Yeah. Um but um super fun and super thinky, super puzzly. Uh super enjoy Dwarf Romantic, the board game. Provided to us by Pegasus Spiel. That's right. Um <laughs> Dan says he has played 300 games, so like half a step. <laughs> yeah, but that's pretty good, Dan. I mean, not everybody can learn that many. That's right. All right, my number 22 is Miss Over Carcassonne. Barely missed my list. <laughs> Just barely. From Hans of Gluck and Z-Man Games. It was actually provided to us later in the year. I learned it in January, so it seems like forever ago. It was a year ago that I learned this game, uh, but then it was provided later on. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my number three in January last year. Uh, this is a cooperative Carcassonne game. I believe I learned this in April. Yeah. After you had already yeah, learned it. Yeah, because I learned it online. And then I learned it in Ni- at Niagara. So Yeah. So, you know, I like this game because there's multiple levels of difficulty, so you can work your way up to, and like, you you know, you see how the game is played, and then you go the next harder level, and then it's like impossible. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, how do we win this game? So I, I, I really we were, like the challenge. Oh, we forgot to take off the ghost. <laughs> I have to do this. So I think it works incredibly well. Um, you can actually use it as an expansion for Carcassonne, too. Oh. I didn't read those rules, so I don't know how that quite works. But if you like Carcassonne, <laughs> if you like Carcassonne yeah. and you like co-ops, yeah. you're going to like co-op Carcassonne, which is this. Of course. So tons of fun with that. I think I played it like five times or so. So it's pretty good. Missed over Carcassonne. My number 21 game is from Colossal Games. My number one game of October. Uh, from, uh, published in 2023, Almost Innocent. Mm-hmm. So uh, in Almost Innocent, it is it is also a cooperative game, but it is a hidden information game. Uh, so Steph is going to know where uh, my person and... Uh, weapon and target and location and everything is and the person to her side is going to know uh, all of that information for her and I will know all of the this person's information and so we're all asking questions of one another to try to impart information to the other people where you're trying to find out where they are on this grid of icons um, varying difficulty levels and uh, super fun if you enjoy Thinky, puzzly, cooperative, hidden information games. 
Yeah, uh, this is actually higher on my list, so I'll I'll talk about it more later. Spoiler! Well, I had the privilege of playing up to level 8. So So you have have even more information. This could go higher on my list. uh, It it definitely will for anybody who likes uh, deduction games. And so, like, it's it's hard because you you might think, oh, deduction, co-op, it's like Paint the Roses. It's actually very different from Paint the Roses. And I'd love both of them. So here, that's what I have to say about that. There you go. Um, Time Roll says, Almost Innocent came in today. Legend's Fault. It sounds okay. like we probably got this really epic bundle of games today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited. Time Roll said he had a bad day today. Sounds like he had to make it, it up by buying lots sad. of games. <laughs> go play those games, Time Roller. Yeah, they'll make you happy. Let's stay here first. Yes. And then go play the games. Uh, You're number 21. Yeah played a couple times but it is my favorite of the series of clank and this is clank catacombs it's also my favorite of this series it almost made me so i will say this um when you decided to keep a clank or get rid of a clank you kept clank in space over clank right 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 so uh you know, because Clank in Space is modular. Right. Normal Clank is not modular, though it does have some expansions. But when some expansions started coming out for Clank in Space, that was the obvious keeper. Now we've got Clank Catacombs, and I think it does what this does even better. So it does, because you are basically exploring the map. Mm-hmm. You don't know the map. And so... Where you know the map in the other games. So it just works so well. Yes. And it's still the deck building game, you know, and like you want to get in and out, but you don't know where in and out means. And like, how can you do it? And what will happen? And it, it just, it works really well. Um, I, I like the Clank games, it's you know, and I, I've always had fun playing it, but this one definitely took it to the next level for me. Yes. So. Well, you know how you have to go in and... And you want to try to get the the biggest value treasure and then hustle it out. <laughs> um, this, you don't necessarily know where those treasures are. And you're not even going to see those treasures until more have been uncovered on the map. Well, where is that going to be? Is that right. going to be across the map from me or right close to me? Right. And so I think that does it for me is that you don't know where the stuff is. Right. So uh, that said, I don't think it is... I don't think I would get rid of Clank in Space just quite yet. No. Maybe someday. Maybe someday, but this does scratch that itch. Yeah, that, that does. It's 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 fun and people will continue to like all of the Clank games, I think. Oh, so yeah. I do I know I do. Yeah. So, yes. And you haven't even played base Clank. I haven't uh <laughs> you know what? I played Clank Legacy and that's a lot like, from what I understand, a lot like it early on. In Probably. the scenarios, it's a lot like that. Um, still, I do enjoy, I do enjoy what I've seen, and so I wouldn't turn down a game of Clank. That's of course, sure. I you would still like it. I would still like it. All right, that was Clank Catacombs. My number twenty was my top game of February, provided to us by Spielberg's London Necropolis Railway. So, well, it's provided to us by BGG, who is holding it. Yes, provided by BGG, and because the BGG store had it store, at the time. Well, yeah. they 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 end up carrying a lot of the Spielworks titles. So or hard to get games in general. Yeah, so you know if you're having trouble finding a lot of games, check out the the board game geek store. Yeah, for and sure. They've got a lot of that stuff in there. Yeah. So for sure, check those out. Um, so you got a Euro game. You've got. Coffin delivery. <laughs> it's a weird theme. From Playgrid in London to the graveyard over this railway in the middle. And you're trying to arrange them in such a way. I guess that is pleasing. Or that's you. <laughs> exactly. I don't know how you, uh, you know, make pleasing configurations of coffins. But clearly, this must be a thing. Oh, yeah. um, you upgrade stuff. Uh, as you do in Euro games, that gives you uh, better abilities to do things. Maybe you can carry more coffins. Maybe you can uh, uh, carry out more, you know, more actions more efficiently. Um, but uh, this uh, was totally, uh, like I say, my favorite game in February. And so it's different. It well, I had never heard of it, and it's like 
Sounds interesting. Yeah. Let's play it. Um, don't uh, don't just dismiss this because it you might think it has a weird theme. If you like Euros, this is super fun. Yeah, for sure. From Spillworks. All right, my number 20 is the ART Project from the Op. Uh, came out this year, and it was my number two game in December. Wow. I know. This is a cooperative game. The artwork is stunning. I like all the different maps and challenges. It is hard. It is it really... It be brutal hard. It yeah. is hard. I think we won. Did we win both games? But it was just by the skin we of our teeth, I think. We so, did, but it, yeah, it was by... We've only played a couple so, times, but I want to play through all the maps. I want to keep trying, maybe try with more people and see if it gets harder, because you have to now manage multiple absolutely. things. Like, I would love that. So I, I think there's a lot in this package, and, you know, the op, the op did a good job with, with the production, for sure. Um, I like how they changed the maps up. That the that the rules change. Yeah. Like when you're um Japan, you've got this little roadway that you can yeah, go super through. Cool. When you're in Egypt, you can go down the Nile with no cost. And struggle up the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> it it makes it so you're managing your resources differently. And I think that's really clever. Yeah. So love that. I could see expansions for this. I you know he's chucking, love it. Yeah. It's, it's a really good co op. Co op, love it. Yep. Yeah. So. Successful in this house. Success. <laughs> uh, my number 19 uh, was, uh, we had learned this back in April, but it was provided to us by Captain Games in November, I think. Yep. Um, and that is Sides. Uh, Aldi taught us this back in uh, April. It is my, amazingly enough, my number 11 game in April. Actually, it was my number 10, but there's a little asterisk with that because there was a game I couldn't talk about in April that would have made my list in April that did make my list here. That's right. That pushed this to number 11, um, and it still made my top 23. Why is this? Because I have had some fantastic experiences with sides, especially recently. I know. Um, playing this game with Wigsby, Derek Porter from BGG. Playing this game with Mick from Our Family Plays Games. Playing this with Stephen Cordell from BGG. He's a sides master. Uh, well, when he and I, when he and I are on the same pat, on the same team, we just look at each other, and I swear there's some sort of <laughs> linked connection. brain link because. We just, it's just synergy right there. And it's yeah. like, if they said that, no, they couldn't have said this. I think it's this. Yeah, I think we should go for it. Zap. And as, and it was right. We get one clue. That's all we need. Anyway, um, basically, you're just trying to, one, uh, one group of people, everyone else is trying to give clues to the two investigators. Uh, and so it's a four play. If it's a four player game, you've got two and two. If it's a eight player game, it's two investigators and six witnesses. And so we're just trying to make them guess the word. It's a party game. A, People can come and go. It's a party game, but it's thinky. It's not it's a thinky. it's yeah. not a casual, oh, let's just have a, a romp in time sort of. Right. This is more of a code names party game. Right. Th this one just missed my list. Like oh, so many. I know. But the <laughs> thing is, it's so conditional on the the group you're playing with some groups I've only I, had good groups I, I know guess. and so I had some okay groups and some really good groups and you don't um, need a large group you can yeah. play this with three this was Aldi's favorite game of the year this was his game of the year so oh, well that's why a number eleven game yeah just jumped on my list because I had on we had played it just the one time with Aldi. It was with a huge group. Like ginormous. Like, <laughs> like super people. I think a too many people group. And that affected my rating. Initially, yeah. Back in April. Yeah. However, my number 11 game of April became my number 19 game of the year. Sides from Captain Games. We had a lot of fun at BGG. Yes. Club, so, yeah, I, I see that. Um, okay. That's cool. My number 19 uh, in September is my number two uh, from Pandasaurus Games is Beacon Patrol. Hey, guess what? It's another cooperative game. I guess <laughs> I've, I've you been know what? really enjoying the co-ops. <laughs> I mean, it's been really weird that it's like 
both you and James came into uh, into my my sphere of influence, I guess you could say, both hating co-ops, <laughs> and I'm like, let me show you the way. <laughs> well, that's the thing, Miss Over Coffee Sun and Art Project and Beacon Patrol and my next game that I will talk about in a bit. But Beacon Patrol is, is basically a cooperative Carcassonne. I mean, it, you're placing these square tiles, but you're limited to how you can place them and the movement of your boat. And so similar tiles, different mechanics. Yeah, because, completely different. Yeah, mechanics. you have three tiles you're placing, and you want to try and surround the red objects in the board. And it's very difficult. You're like, oh, we can do this easily, and then it's like you get all the wrong tiles, and you're going all the wrong directions, and you're really far away from where you need to go and where you need to be to place the next tiles. So there's a challenge on how to manipulate the board but you get this key feature of being able to switch one tile with your your partner uh and that might save you from like total despair you know and so it's challenging and it's fun and i'd like that challenge yeah. so for me it's a really cute artwork game i mean it's just it's it's, it's got that saucy artwork yeah. yeah it's just cute i mean it reminds me of maine and that's like where my family is and everything so it's like it's my my family loves lighthouses, so it's like <laughs> it's like it's cool. It's cool. I like it. So I, I think I think the co op experiences for you really turned when I introduced you to Pathfinder, Pathfinder adventure card games. Um, Pathfinder. Uh, I I figured that would do it. Yeah, I love it so much. So nothing nothing's really come close to that. Oh yeah, but it's but still. But still, yeah. it made you realize. Wait, come. Cooperative games don't have to suck. Yeah, it well, doesn't have to have alpha gaming. Then, but yeah. Um, but that's why James didn't like cooperative games is that's because fair. oh, alpha gaming and everything. His his first play of Pandemic, he had someone basically telling him what to do, and he's like, "Well, if you're going to tell me what to do, why do I even need to play?" Or he's like, "If you're going to make moves for me, you know, then you know, I don't have to, I, I don't have to be here you. for it." And he's like. Well, you have to do this if you don't want to lose. And he's like, all right. And he walked away. No. Um, but there's no alpha gaming in this house. No. So we make sure to have a good, fun, playing cooperative games here. Yep. Uh, my number 18 is uh, another super fun game uh, from Sorry We Are French, published in 2023, provided to us. Um, and it was Galileo Project. Um Basically, uh, it is a uh, card and resource manipulation game. Uh, basically, you either have Mars credits or Earth credits, and you can purchase Mars cards or Earth cards, but you cannot hold both currencies at the same time. If you want to uh, flip-flop them, you got to pay the little uh, uh, casino broker a <laughs> casino credit to do so. And then you've got a whole bunch of Earth credits where you had Mars credits, and then you can buy different cards. And the more of certain things you get, the more powerful those things become. Um, if you like resource manipulation and card games, uh, Galileo Project is probably something you want to look at. I went back and forth on Anacillus. This one, like, really was just there. I mean, the game is stunning. Look at that cover. It's I mean, it's beautiful. Amazing. Amazingly gorgeous. And now that I, I think really about like it, the gameplay, too. Maybe it should so have been a little higher on my list looking at yeah. some of these, but... But uh, currently, the number 18 on my list, it was my number one game of May. Yeah. Um, And no other May games made my list. So it clearly left an impression in May. So. Yeah. No, it's a great game. I mean, we played a few times. Hey, Games Mama. How's hey, it going? Mama. Um, hey, Jelfia. Hello, Jelfia. So, yeah, that that's one that, you know, I, I've played it mm, like four times, I think. And so that's that's a lot. But, you know, I. I like it. It's gonna remain on the shelf because it's a good, it's a great game. Like you know, so. Yep. I get it. No need to apologize for being French. Yeah. <laughs> but it's from Sorry We Are French. That's right. <laughs> All right, my number eighteen. Yes. Was hey, guess what? Another co-op game. <laughs> what? Uh, from crazy. Uh, it was my number six in August. So this actually oh, went, went up after a second play, I think. Uh, Freelancers, a Crossroads game. From Plaid Hat Games? Yes. We played through the whole thing with James and Susan, with four players, and we played the whole thing on stream, and it was a lot of fun. So good. Both times. So why is it great? Well, it's because they have this app 
a web driven app that just runs you through the whole game. You don't have to like read a whole 20 page rule book to get going. They introduce things really nicely on the, the app base. You have all these fun encounters and you get crazy title like cannibalism. Like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a cannibal. Because, because she was juice. a bug and she drank bug juice and she got the cannibalism title. Like, I'm Hilarious. A I mean, that's so funny. Yeah. I, I, I basically died when I was like, what? Yeah. There are literally I'm a bug. Oh, I'm a bug. There are literally Oops. roll on the floor laughing uh moments in this game. Just nuts. It was nuts. It's it's an experience game for sure. Now, you say that we played all the way through it. We played a scenario all the way yeah, through. And then the one on stream was a different scenario right. all the way through. I think there are three or five in the box scenarios and i am i, I but suspect you can, break it up, you can break each scenario yeah. up into parts because it's a lot it would be like a four hour like game if you played through it all which we did twice uh two different scenarios but yeah but it didn't take that long yeah it's like three to four hours is for the whole thing but if you wanted to break it up into like hour long games you could also there's stopping points right but there are different scenarios yeah that you can play through which has different maps but here's the thing i think it's replayable uh if you go through a scenario again i don't think it gives you the same encounters or you can go a different route that's also possible because there are multiple paths you can take in the world and so so th yeah. there's new things to encounter, I think, for I, sure. So you say it was a four-hour game. I don't think it took us four hours either time. It did. It. I don't think so. But you can also you can go to YouTube and check out our video for freelancers. Yeah, it's good. It's a good one. Absolutely. That is your number 18 game, your number six game of August. Clearly, it went up on your list. It, it did. Because it, it, you skipped some other August games, I see. Yeah, because just just thinking about it it's 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 it like held up it held yeah it makes me want i want to go play like i want to yes. play the next one and see what happens and just have fun uh time roller confirms same locations have different encounters played the same scenario twice and had different results awesome totally replayable and i think that would make it a permanent keeper on my shelf that's cool yeah yeah. I like that. And you're different characters, too. So you're, Absolutely. you're trying different things. I mean, there's tons of characters. It's like, so. do you have a bug in your party? If you do, this happens. Business. Yeah. Yes. So. It, it, it's cool. It's really cool. And yeah, it's just it's a it's a good experience game that people should play. Yes. Uh, my number 17 game I just talked about the other day on for our December yep. top 10 list. Yep. Because it's my number three game in December from the op. It's Harry Potter Unmask the Death Eaters. So thanks to the op for providing that game to us. Uh, if you enjoy hidden role games and uh, you enjoy uh, card-based games where you're contributing cards into a pile in, an, in order to complete a mission, then uh, this will scratch those itches for you. Now, uh, similar sorts of games... Uh, that I would compare it to would be like the resistance. But to me, the resistance did not have nearly enough meat on the bone for a hidden role game to work. Yeah. So I was never, I love hidden role games, but resistance fell flat for me. This fixes all of that. I think, um, yeah, this, this was, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, I, I don't say that lightly because you don't I, generally like hidden role I, games. I don't, I don't. Talk about it's stressful. Well, wow. it's, it's too stressful for me generally. But this was fun because, like, you can't just hand over cards. You, I mean, if people select you, you just hand over cards. You don't have to be like, you don't have to lie too much. You just have to try to keep your face in a straight, like, not cheat. This is not not trying to betray people. So, Steph, this is your intro to uh, to becoming a Cylon on Battlestar. Well, that's another thing. You, you can compare it to Battlestar a little bit because halfway through the game, you get a second roll. So you might, halfway through the game, turn into that traitor that you didn't want to be. 
<laughs> Which doesn't bother me one bit. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you only have to be a traitor for half the game, and then you feel better about yourself. <laughs> so it, it works for me. Embrace the dark. And it's a great theme, because I love Harry Potter, so the theme is automatically plus one point. Yeah. <laughs> plus one point for Ravenclaw. Yeah. Or for uh, Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is Harry Potter provided uh, Unmasked the Death Eaters provided to us by the op. Yep. My number 17 was what August. My number three in August called Come Sail Away. Come Sail Away. Come Sail Away with Me. So this was uh, a lower game on my August list. Mm -hmm. And it went up enough to make my short list for this for this uh, list, but did not make it. It was literally okay. in between 23 and 30. Yeah. It almost made it, it. Almost made it. So for me, I've played this a whole bunch, maybe 15 times. No, I don't know, 10 times or something. I don't know. Some number that I've Some played a bunch. Some number of times. Because my Tuesday group really likes it, so we, we've been playing it. But uh, it's easy. It's fast. It's, you draft cards and you get to fill up your boat of meeples. It's just, it's, it's, Simple and really fun. It's Me, it's, it's uh, card drafting, but there's meeples on the card. So basically, you're meeple drafting. Yeah, you're meeple drafting in the in order in which you're placing these guys. And yep. the game is under 30 minutes. And it's I, I like Sashi and Sashi games anyway, just so. I would say this is probably one of their best. Yeah, it's a really good one. Believe so. me, it came out this year, so I, I'm still it's still I'm still starry eyed about it. But I <laughs> I think it will hold up over many years like I think so it's a game i want to keep playing so uh, i'm excited to that it's on the list for me not you but whatever <laughs> so what he says carmen ruined uh come sail away for me yeah me too but in a good way because i always want cartman to sing it uh, uh, <laughs> no my number 16 is the reason why you should keep your top your top list of 2023 open until the very last day of the year because you might find a game that is in your top. And my number 16 game played on December 30th. Yep. I believe it was. Yep. Um, so just in the past week. And then we played it on stream for you guys uh, the other day. King of Monster Island uh, published in 2022 and provided to us by Yellow and Flat River Group. My number two game of december so another co-op shocker um <laughs> this is definitely the best of the king of tokyo series of games yes now when uh, as i explained before uh king of new york uh was really fun good little dice chucker uh and it was uh it's been around for a while now that i played it when it first came out then King of New York came out, and it was even better. Though it didn't really have the expansions that King of New York, that King of Tokyo had, with right. the Power Up expansion, which I really enjoyed. Sure, but I did enjoy that gameplay better. Now with this, this takes it to a whole nother level. Uh, I enjoy it that much more because there's not a lot of the take that feel bad sort of things that you get with the King of Tokyo and King of New York games where the person in the middle gets ganged up on, you have to retrieve from the middle, and someone else goes in the middle, and they're they're going to get ganged up on until they drop out. It is a, those are push your luck, and they are enjoyable, but I think this is even better. Yeah. And uh, not that I am stuck on co-op games, but just the fact that it happens to be a co-op game, I mean, they could it could they could have made a competitive King of Monster Island, and it would have been fine, but I I do enjoy the cooperative aspect. Yeah, me too. Like, they could have easily made it competitive where, you know, you're getting different points for, like, attacking the big guy versus other players, and you still have to manage the board for this, like, bot. Like, yeah, you could totally have made it where you could go in there, attack the big bad guy, get a bunch of fame points, and get out, but they didn't. They intentionally decided to make it a co-op. Yeah. And I like that. It works well. It works well. It does. So. so that is my number 16. How about your number 16? My number 16. We played this. Yes. Matter of fact, we played Come Sail Away and this game. And on, Vegetable Stock. And Vegetable Stock on our Alphabet Challenge Day on January 1st. I know. 
Uh, so this is Roman a day. Um, this was my number four in May. Uh, so this just hits all the right spots. I love I Split You Choose. I wish there were more games in this genre uh, with this mechanic. There are several. Love I Split You Choose. It's just not a whole lot. Maybe it's like too much pressure for people. Like they don't. Why? I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's just not a lot of this mechanic. This game in particular is just four turns. I split you choose. Very streamlined. And it works so well. It like, is. It's just so simple. And. It's about as short as you can get an, yeah. an I split you choose game to be this good. Yeah. Just still down to this simple. Yeah. Of a of a tile laying and drafting mechanism. Yep. Um, yeah, I agree. And so what they did here is just it works so well, even with two players or more <laughs> players. It's it's really good. Because I split you choose as a punishment for siblings as children. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. You know what? I never had to use that with my boys, but that's fantastic. You got a whole bunch of candy here. All right. You guys split and the other person chooses. <laughs> you have to you have to divide equally, right? It you yes, got to. Do. You never did that with your brother, I'm no, sure. No. But it's perfect. Parents, use this. There you go. It's tough choices. <laughs> it's tough choices. Uh so yeah, this was provided to us for Malika Games, uh, and it came out this year. So or well, 2023. Uh, definitely worth checking out. It's it it's a must-keep shelf game that is easy to pull out and play. Your number four game of May? Yep. There you have it. That's about it. Rome in a day. Plays really quickly. Yeah, it's nice. It's good. My number 15 game um, was my f- number five game in February. Uh, remember, we've already passed by my number one game of February, so you can see how far up this has this climbed on my list. We, we ended up playing it a bunch. We played it a bunch this year. It's called. It was, it was a, a super good surprise. It is Kazuka, um, published in 2022 uh, by Pegasus Spiel, and was not provided to us by Pegasus Spiel, though they normally provide us their games. It was we ended up getting this from the from the Dale the, pile. The Dale pile. Yes. Because this came out of Essen. And so sometimes Essen releases take a while to get over yeah. to the US. So this didn't come out in the US until much later. So. So another co-op. I know, right? I mean, is what is this the year of the co-op? Now that I look at it, maybe it is the year <laughs> of the co-op. Um, yeah, maybe. Because like so the box isn't doing much it didn't get great reviews from the opinionated gamer clan of people. They're like, it's not a good game. And so I, my hopes for this one were very low when we went into it. But I'm like, right. let's try it. It looks cute. And we'll see how it goes. It's awesome. It's it's awesome. So you're a bunch of animals. You want to escape from the zoo. Uh, and to do that, you have to use the zoo's trash, which is represented by cards you're going to get in your hand. Well, you've got seven days to do it. And every day, everything is going to reset but you want to try to get experience that will let you go farther and farther and farther to, so you can get out before day seven because you don't want to be stuck in the zoo at day seven because they're going to send you to a worse zoo. Um, but it is basically where you are trying to, co- it's like collective cooperative liar's dice um, where you are trying to, uh, but as opposed to like trying to, um, be competitive against other people. You're trying to work together to give them information about your hand because you want to collectively have enough red cards or collectively have enough green cards to progress further down this path. And of course, you don't want to go over. I mean, you don't want to go under. If you think that you've got seven green, you hopefully you better have seven green. Hopefully you don't have uh, six. But also, hopefully, you don't have eight or nine because you could have gone farther and gotten more experience or maybe even gotten out of the zoo. Um, If this sort of push-your-luck, cooperative sort of uh, hidden information game appeals to you, check out Kazooka from Pegasus Spiel. And since since playing it, I talked to a bunch of people and everybody seems to really like it. It's been a hit with everyone, including people 
who these games don't generally appeal to, and they're like, "Yeah, this is cool." Yeah, it, so it, it. I played. I played it with one group at Dice Tower, and all three of them bought it. <laughs> wow! Like I did my job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I sold the game. <laughs> And, and without being provided a copy by the publisher, <laughs> yeah, go figure. Well, it's it's a fun game. It's a game I want to play yeah. more of, so I'm excited to teach it to more people. Well, this is this is why review copies are a thing. That is all right. My number fifteen is Inside Job from Cosmos. From this actually came out in 2022. Uh, we learned it in what July, July, and it was my number four. This actually went up in my. And that is that's amazing to me for a couple of reasons. <laughs> um, number one, you rated it higher than I did uh, because I think if I'm going to play one or the other, mine might be Harry Potter. Inside Job barely missed my list. It was on my up to going up to number thirty, just missed my list. The number two reason why I'm surprised that it made your list is because it's a hidden trader game. Another hidden trader game that you actually like. I know. I like the <laughs> I like the aspect in this of well, one, like the trick taking mechanic. Yeah. And the fact that we're trying to complete these goals and whoever is not completing these goals are clearly the trader, right? No, people just don't have the cards to play, so it doesn't always work that way. And it's just it's an interesting way, but the game significantly improves once you start using roll cards and then each player has different goals like that aren't necessarily like traitor or good guy. It could just be neutral, neutral. or have their own sort of crazy uh, goal to do. So it makes the game, you're thinking about it even more. And so I want to play this game more. So this, this game could go up or down with more plays. But for me, it's just it's sitting in my mind like, well, I really want to play that. It may it- a game that draws you in like that yeah. is a game is a game that should go higher on on your list because you want to play it more and that's how Kazuka <laughs> went up. Yeah, it's on the it's on, like on the top of my mind like oh I wish we could play that and like oh I was thinking oh, why don't we play that in the alphabet challenge for I it's like a fast like one hand game so yeah it's 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 good it's I I was I was impressed I I really didn't think I would like it. <laughs> Honestly, I did not think I was going to like it. it. The fact that it's here is pretty amazing to me. Because uh, yeah, looking at your list, I don't see any other games from July. And this is your fourth on July. Yeah, so. So that's how much it impressed you. It is her current number one game from July. Yes. How about that? Inside job provided to us by Cosmos. Yep. We are up to number 14. Yes. Uh, another game that went slightly in front of London Necropolis Railway because it was my number two game in February. Also, not was this provided to us? No, nope, this was part of the Dale. This pack. was another one in the Dale pack. Yeah, that's surprising. Game published in 2022 by Horrible Guild. It is the Great Split. Yep. And the reason why it went up on my list is because we've gotten to play it a couple of times since. And the I split you choose it's sort of mechanic fun. <laughs> is super fun. Now, what this game has that a lot of other I split you choose games do not have is that when I do an I split you choose with my uh, neighbor, I am going to keep whatever cards I I get that get sent back to me and that I've chosen from my other partner. I'm keeping those for the next round. So I think that makes it. Yeah. More interesting. It's like, oh, hey, I'm I am not going to go up anymore on this. Tr- uh, a lot of those type of games, I'm not going to be able to go up anymore on this track because those things are all gone. No, I've got them in my hand. Um, but here's the thing: if you need a different sort of resource, you got to hope that your neighbors will give them to you. Because uh, if they don't then you may be in trouble. Well, you always have your bonus push. You so always have a bonus too. push. Um, so basically, uh, I split, you choose. Track pushes with bonuses. Um, that That is super fun for me. Yeah. So uh, that's what made it my number 14 game of this year. Nice. My number 14 game is... Jangguo. Jangguo. 
Zhuang Guo. <laughs> Gotta correct me every time. <laughs> the first empire. Yes, from Sorry We Are French. A new edition. Yeah. Which you, we have both now. Yeah. And you're still not sure which to keep. I know. They're they're very different. They are very different. They're, they're very same, but very different. <laughs> this one adds a whole river track and, an, and a new, like, resource almost to think about. And it's just... It's it's it's. I think this is actually heavier than the other one. I think so too. But it's not like they just added that mechanic. They also took the physical walls, yeah, they separating mechanics. separating the provinces, and made it a more abstract mechanic where you don't see where you put the walls on the map. It's all the stuff at the top of the game board yeah, that you're just allocating stuff. to. They changed the scoring up a bit, uh, so. It, it it works a little differently. Um, I don't even know if you've played the original, but um, I still I still really I love the game. I we had a great time playing it. We played it twice. I've been wanting to teach my other group uh, it because I Choose know that group. I know that they will really love it. It's it's a pretty heavy game, uh, but it's not hard. It's not. Don't they use it's cards? It's not overly heavy, and so you have to decide how you're using your cards in your hand, and that's the hardest part. Like, do I do it for this or do I do it for that? And managing all of that is the the game. And yeah, I love 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 multi use cards, and it's done really so well. much so that I mean, my favorite game, Battlestar, multi use cards. Yeah, my game, Warehouse, multi use cards. Yep. So it's. That sort of mechanic is fascinating to me because it, it gives you the difficult decision of, do I save it for this mm-hmm. or do I play it for this? Yep. Which one do I do? Or which three things tough. do I do if it's even, you know, multi-multi-use cards? Yeah, it's tough. Um, So Euro, multi-use cards, um, worker, uh, really, uh, not really worker placement, but card placement. Uh, you do have workers that uh, that you place on these tracks, um, but it's it's a fantastic game. Yeah, uh, it and really I is. had not played the original. No, um, and was really impressed by the remake. I knew you would be. That's yeah. why I'm like, we need to play this, and I think I knew he would like this one. So yes. I was happy to. I was excited to get it to the table, and that came out this year and was my number two in August. So yeah, it's really good. Zhang Guo, the first empire from Sorry We Are French. Who, hey, that's a, that's two Sorry We Are French games on the list so far. Super solid. Super solid. Uh, another game from Captain Games. Uh, it is, I don't think this is available yet. Or if it is. It's going to be soon, I would uh, say. Yeah, because they said that they did not have any copies uh, available when we were at BGGCon, which is when we played this. This is my number three game of... Uh, November, um, and published date of 2023. It is Path of Civilization. Um, in this game, uh, you are basically deciding which of your cards to play, whether you want it for a left or a right value, um, and which that's going to push you up on certain tracks, which will give you certain resources to put one new card in your hand, but you're getting rid of one card in your hand. Um, You know, do you want these resources or do you want these advisors, which will give you leaders? Do you want these resources or do you want uh, military resources or do you want soldiers that can go help you fight the war that's going to be coming either this turn or next turn? And you, you all contribute things to these spaces and that makes it so you're able to have first dibs on whatever it is that you're going for, whether you're going for an event or a war or a advisor to uh, rule your king, your civilization. Uh, love civilization building games. Yeah, me, so, me too. I so really if do. you if you enjoy drafting, you enjoy resource management. Uh, if you enjoy, it's sort of like an area control with regards to. Uh, how they do the war mechanic, the cubes um, where if you are the top contributor to uh, defending against the war, you're going to get the biggest reward, and then second gets this and third. So in that way, it's area control, which you don't generally like area control, but I think it's, you do like this. Well, yeah, because this is more of a hand management card situation. 
uh, because the cards will give you those resources. Mm-hmm. But do you want to go that way or do you want to go a different way? And like you could do something else. You don't I, have to go for the war. You can do other things. It's not map based area control. It's okay. more like event based area control. So area yeah. control, drafting, uh, resource and hand management. Um, civilization building, all of which are, I, love Civ. I mean, those Steam. are all checks on. My... Yeah, it's, this game is really good. Yeah. So uh, I, I worry a little bit whether um, there is a better path to victory. Do you, is it better to always go towards, uh, you know, a military, for example, or a technology or whatever? Um, there... But I do want to play it more and that's yeah. always a good sign. Yeah, I think the the one problem I have is like all of the cards that you're buying are the same each game, so that's where the same. Yes. But all of the events will change or change, and then all of the cards that are coming out to like leaders and stuff will change, and so so I'm hopeful you don't know what you're gonna need necessarily. So there's always something to think about. So I I think it's really well done. I love the bold colors in this game. It's just it's a nice game. But it says, still one of the funnier producers, publishers in the board game sphere. Which one? Sorry, Sorry we are French. French yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, um, for sure. So that is Path of Civilization from Captain Games. Yep. Oh, it's very bright and colorful, too. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, it's really bright. Is that yeah. the colors pop. Yep. Maybe not on the game box, but it, it pops on the card. Yeah, and Hachette, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hachette <laughs> provided that. Um, oh, yeah. Kimmy had mentioned uh, earlier that... Uh, she had gotten, um, what was it? Was it The Great Split or John Guo? It was John Guo, and she had got it and hadn't played it yet. Yeah, so fun. You're going to love it. I think so. Uh, my number 13 is Age of Innovation from Capstone Games. Came out this year. It was just my- missed another one that just missed my list. <laughs> it was my number three in November. Um, I, I, I love Gaia Project. So it's hard not to compare this to that. So I, I still like Gaia Project more. However, I do like this more than Terra Mystica. So, just for just so you know, Gaia Project, Age of Innovation, Terra Mystica. That being said, I still own them all. Yes. So <laughs> well, they're all good. Terra right? Mystica because of the expansions. Age of Innovation for the fact that it improves Terra Mystica, though it doesn't yet have expansions, though it could have expansions. And I guess that project because you're not getting hemmed in. I love like that part. you can with either Age of Innovation or Terra Mystica. Right. While still maintaining all the other good stuff that you love. Exactly. So this one, uh, it does a little bit differently for your initial setup, which I love. You're laying out these different characters, different uh, abilities, and different starting um, goals. Or love the modularity. So of, of that's the, of always going to change up. It, the the whole setup of the game makes the game like that much better. Like it, it's the little things like that just make the replay value go way up because yes. you could be like the mermaids. It's not mermaids, but you could be. The, the faction with this power and this goal tile that you're trying to do or whatever. So it's it's always going to, you're not, you're never going to be the same two. Or if you are, you're doing that by design because you <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> so it, it, the way you do, you pick your race and everything is just really cool. Um, and then they add this new book mechanic, which is cool. Um, so it's not that, it's not that red does the same thing every time because you're, you're drafting, yeah, so the, that goal differently. So exactly. all the so powers the differently. The person and your color are different abilities and things. So yeah, it's it the way it's just elegant. It's nice. Elegant. It's fun. It's, Very it's elegant. Cool. It's cool. I so I was impressed by this, and it's a game that you know. Maybe I should have put it higher up on my list. Now. <laughs> I'm like, this is on your list. I'm a bit it, surprised. It barely. It's just so barely I missed. Know this year so yes um so yeah this one i i like it and i want to play it again and you know try new factions and try new strategies and see how it goes i don't like the fact that you still can get boxed in yeah it's that that's still not that's why gaia project is like for me still like king well one reason why the uh, one reason why this missed my list is because i think some of the some of the the new with learning tiles 
that are up at the top of the board, if they're not set up in a certain good way for you, then you're not going to be able to get uh, to claim those tiles. You have to really work on it. Before your opponent snipes it. And so it's like... Eh. It just depends on your ability. You might yeah, not... Exactly. You might not be doing a book strategy kind of game. Right. So you might just be like not worrying about it and use the books for other things because you can use the books for like other things like right. for, as payment. So... And that might be more beneficial to you than actually going for the book tiles. I mean, I tried to make it so. work twice and, and like missed horribly, I think. It's um, hard. I hard. I want because that's, that's one of the new things there. And I just want to, I want to use that because yeah. it's there. Yeah, that's fair. It's but I did want to try it. I did. I did enjoy the play. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Cause it did make the, out of, I mean, look, we, we both played close. I played close to 600. You played 650. Yeah. And it's in my top 30. Exactly. So, so it's for- this is not trash here. We're talking. Oh. It's the top 5% of games. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's worth playing. Worth playing. Provided to us by Capstone. That is Age of Innovation. My number 12 game. Uh, another one not provided to us. Um, no, we played at BGG Con. But we did play at BGG Con. So it is my number two game of November uh, in 2023, from DLP Games and Capstone Games, it is Pirates of Maracaibo. Um, if uh, a lo- I think a lot of the reason why people haven't heard a lot about this, I think, is because they're like, "Oh, this is an expansion to Maracaibo." I really thought it was, honestly. and and that's the thing. Most people probably think that. But no, it is not an expansion. It is a streamlined it is a, version. It is a lighter, streamlined version of Maracaibo. And it's great. Where Maracaibo uh, has more of the drafting and hand management stuff, I think more than Pirates of Maracaibo oh, yeah, does. Sure. Um, your boat is going around the Caribbean, and it's a little bit of a race to get everything done more efficiently in Maracaibo. In Maracaibo. And there is a scenario mode to Maracaibo. Uh, and you've also got your Explorer. Pirates of Maracaibo streamlines all this by making the map only for your little uh, uh, Explorer guy. Yeah. And all of your boat traveling is done fairly linearly from one side of the board to the other. And that is one cycle. And I think it lowers the amount of race that there is that can be done, you know, pushing forward. Race feel to it. Yes. Whoever gets I to the agree. end and pushes that end, right? Yes. So there's still, it's still there, but it maybe, is still le- there. maybe less so because you're limited to three movement. Or limited whatever. to this. Yeah. One, but you're also forced to move forward one to three. Yeah. So, and you're forced to move forward on that track, though yeah. you can go back and forth through. You always have to move, uh, toward the right on that track from left to right. Um, but as you encounter these cards along the way, some of them are cities that you can do trade with. Some of them are things that you can keep and uh, use their abilities. Um, and uh, I, I think it's just, it's really well done uh, how they made it a much more streamlined uh, way of playing Maracaibo. Right. Um, I don't, a lot of times when people say streamline, they really mean that they dumbed it down. I don't think it's that at all. I just think that they do it differently and and a little smoother, but not to where it fires Maracaibo. Right, right. Because if you want that richness, you've got Maracaibo. And if you want a faster playtime, you've got Pirates of Maracaibo. Right. I say streamline in this sense, uh, like you said, it's like a smooth, it's a smooth play. And it's faster. But not dumbed down. Yeah, you're still doing a lot of things. Maybe simplifying some things. Yeah, of course. And and adding a, a few things like, oh, hey, you've got a, a, a jade and a silver and a gold track, I believe it is. Right. And based on how much is in the world, that lowers and raises the prices of these things. And I don't think, I don't think that Maracaibo has any of that. So... Uh, they they didn't just strip stuff out and not add anything in. So yep, they're kind of friendly pirates. Yes. <laughs> so that is uh, my number twelve game, P- 
Pirates of Maracaibo. Hopefully we get a review copy at some point. Because, yeah. man, I really want to play more It wasn't yet available from Capstone, but I think it's coming. I hope so. I hope so, too, because obviously it's got to be added to the collection. Oh, yes. For sure. Mm-hmm. Any of these from... games that you hear, yeah, there's... Are, these are all keepers. We all, yeah, we want to keep all these games. Um, my number 12, we actually just talked about with you. What? Is Path of Civilization from Captain Games. Your number two game of November. Yep. Came out this year. Uh, super love the theme of civ, civ building type games. Um, Check. <laughs> yeah, I like the hand management because you like you don't want to get rid of the cards, but the, the higher the points of the cards that you're getting rid of, you, the more points you'll get or whatever. Whatever it was, but you don't want to get rid of the really good cards because they're providing more benefits. And, and which them. one do you get rid of? Which way Can are you, you going to go? You have to decide, you right? You might get rid of a card that you're not going to be able to get back. What do you I do? Know. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. There's good choices to be made. And the gameplay, actually, it was pretty fast. I feel like we played it in like an hour or so. It so. For a Civ game, it is it is fairly fast. Yeah, so I kind of put it in line with like, it's a little bit more complex than Hadara. Yes. Uh, and, and Seven Wonders. But it's kind of like... I would say it falls in line with those. Um, I think it's probably, in, uh, if you're looking for a, um, um, what is the, uh, uh, Nations and uh, Through the Ages, I think those are heavier heavier tier games yeah. than, than. This is lower than this that. Is lower, sure. This is lower than that. Yeah. Um, however, you still get a, a good feel. I think Hadara, um, is not really Civ building, but right. it is, it does have a, I love the, engine. I just, yeah, I love the engine on yeah. Hadara. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I agree. It's a lighter Civ building game. Yeah. So for me, it works really well. I'm excited to, you know, play it more. It's, it's definitely a game that I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to putting in the collection for sure. Yeah. Path of Civilization is your number 12. Uh, my number 11 is another November game. I have three November games in a row. Three, two, and one. My no- <laughs> number one game of November provided to us by Czech Games Edition from 2023. Kutnohora, the City of Silver. Yeah. Um. So I am really intrigued and fascinated by the way that they did the economy. So cool. Um. This is at its heart... A Euro, uh, not really worker placement, but uh, uh, card hand management sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, where you're, uh, you've got this static hand of cards that you've got to choose one side of or other. So multi-use cards. Um, and you are basically spending those actions to claim a plot of land. To actually build something on that plot of land, but you can only build the things for your three guilds that you belong to, and of which there are six. So there's some sort of, um, you know, competition with uh, with your neighbors. At least if you're playing three players or more, um, and if things don't get built, then what happens? The AI actually builds them for you, but it's all built into this economic card engine that they've got. Um, and I think that 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 is the most intriguing thing for me and why it rose so high on my list uh, is is not necessarily the tile play or the mining tile play or the different abilities. It's how they made that engine work. Um, I do want to play more plays of this with different player accounts to see how well it holds up. I'm a I'm somewhat concerned that the economy is too rubber banded together because if you do build something, the prices go down. If you don't build something, the AI steps in and builds it eventually. Eventually, but you can't let that price push up, 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 up because it's artificially going to drop. Uh, so that's what I, that's what I mean by everything seems a little bit rubber banded together. Is that you know the things that we all build all become lower price. And we can't really make them go up for other players. So I, w- I want to play this more um, just to see if all of that holds up. But for now, I'm still very fascinated by how they they worked all of this into an elegant sort of gameplay. And lots of interesting decisions, which I think makes or breaks a game is 
interesting decisions, and this game has it. Definitely one of the, you know, it, it's definitely one of the better games we learned this year. It didn't make my list, but it, it was, you know, it was definitely in my consideration. Probably almost made your list, I would think, yeah. considering you you did enjoy this. Yeah, for sure. I would say I did not enjoy it at two players, but I, I did enjoy it at three and four. I players. think the weakness with two players, like I say, there are six guilds. With two players, you've got one person with three guilds, another person with three guilds, and no competition between the two. I've got these three. She's got the other three because things have to be created into the world. With with three players, there's always going to be one thing that each of us has in combination Same. with each other. And so um, I think that that really improves things a lot. Well, that and the board is just so tiny with two people that it's just you. I feel like it's just a little too a tight. little tight, a little too tight for me. So but yeah, it's a super, super good game. And that I think a lot of people need to try it because, yeah, it won't be for everybody. But there are some really cool ideas in this game. Right. It's so attractive. I mean, really pretty game. Um, Really pretty. If you enjoy black and white. This game box right here is super attractive as is. When you put out the game board, it's still a lot of black and white and silver. You start putting the buildings on there, boom, that color pops. pops. Yeah, it really, really pops. Yeah, it's a good design. Yeah. I like it. And uh, it really works with your photography. Oh, yeah. It's pretty, I gotta say. It's a pretty game. <laughs> All right. My number 11 is... Next Station Tokyo from Blue Orange Games was provided to us by them, and uh, it came out this year and was my number one in April. Nice. Uh, many know that last year, Next Station London made my list. Uh, I love Next Station London. I've played hundreds of games on Board Game Arena. This one, I've played probably 100 games on Board Game Arena. It's so much harder, though. Like, I'm not saying that it's, like, a hard game, but, like... It kind of like warps your mind a little bit. You're like, how is this going to work like this? If I, it, it's not as straightforward as Next Station London. And even that, a lot of people might not grasp fully. But I recommend starting with London and then moving to this one because yes. this has all the same kind of mechanics as London, but it, it, has new abilities that will like allow you to go extend, do different things that it, that are weird. And then there's this big circle that, so the regions are really awkward and not square. <laughs> like, so, but it's a roll and write, it's flipping right. So, you know, it's going to be fast. It's a fast game. And I just love trying to make it work, I'm trying to get all the goals, trying to make the connections and do all the cool things. You've played it a few times. I did. And it is not... It's not your favorite. It is, it's okay. I, I don't... I would not turn down a game. Right. This uh, is why I play on Board Game Arena. And this is why she plays it on Board Game Arena. Because... But also because it's it's just so much faster on Board Game Arena. All of yeah, these... click buttons. All of these games. Like, click, click, click. And yeah. everything just does it for you. That um, is a nice feature. Yeah. Um, but I gotta say... If you're not good at London or Tokyo, you will always get beat at London or Tokyo. It's not fair that I've hundreds so, of plays. Well, on see, that's game. what I'm about to say is that, <laughs> okay, I've played chess with tons of different people in my life, and I'm not really that big of a fan of chess. I can see moves ahead, but it's just it's not enjoyable. Right. And another reason is that if you get people of two different skill levels. Yeah. I mean, I it's get that. It's not going to feel fun. So when you get a hundred game, I know. games of something, I know. it's like, <laughs> do I really just want to play just to play and then get my butt kicked? I don't mind losing, but we can play this, uh, solo games together just to get your better high score. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's the bully. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a bully. I just played it a lot. <laughs> it's um, fine. And I get what you're saying, so I will just stick to the arena mode in Board Game Arena. I mean... And play I, it with the pros that will stomp on my face, and it's fine. See, and, and But I wonder, though, what makes someone a pro at it? I mean, clearly there are better moves to be had. 
But maybe it just ends up being more intuition that, oh, hey, that looks like a good move, I guess. Because well, so I never seem to do well enough to ever come close to beating. I mean, not even in the neighborhood. It is always, here are the scores, 98, 105, 110, 172. <laughs> I mean, it's not even it's not even like there was a sliver of a chance. It is a dusting. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but feel like it's chess once you know you know. Okay. And see, that, that's what I'm wondering. Is you that have to, you have to look at the cards and see what you have remaining? Like, oh, we still have a square. I can prepare for this square over here, so I'm gonna go this way and and open up more options over here. It's just more. It's yeah. The more you play, the more you see the. Di so I always love playing people who are way better than me because then I see what they're doing and I'm like, I get it now. Like, hold off, don't play this turn because I have better options later with my next card. I guess. So th there's just no one to hold them. <laughs> no one to fold them. No one to walk away. Anyway. No one to run. Anyway, I don't love this one. And I know when to run. <laughs> I don't love this one as much as London, but I am happy to have options. I also don't enjoy this as much as London. I wonder why that is. It's because it's this one is punishing. It's hard. It's really hard. I guess. It is hard. I mean, it, the map is challenging. So <laughs> it, it you it's hard to do anything. <laughs> but they give you cool things like the ability to yeah. ride the line again. I yeah. love that. I go, the circle. And then I go play London. I'm like, why don't I have that ability here? <laughs> like, oh, Fair I love enough. that ability. Uh, anyway. Moving into top 10. The top 10 games of 2023. My number 10 game uh, is a game provided to us by Born and Dice. My number two game of. Oh, what is that? September. It is Nucleum from Board and Dice. Um, David Turksey thought that we absolutely hated him after <laughs> sitting through his teach of <laughs> Voidfall. His super long teach. That teach of Voidfall is longer than most games we played <laughs> this year. Um, Put it together. No, I'm just kidding. And oh, oh. oh. Ouch! We love you, David. Um, and and Voidfall is just it fell so flat for me. Um, did not make my top ten list of April. Did not make my top hundred list of April. Um, it was just not there for me. Nucleum, though, he was like, "Oh, I know you're going to hate it." And you know how he he talks deep like that. It's like. I always I thought I always thought you hated me. No, we love you, David. We love you, David. And we love Nucleum. Yes. Um, it is uh super elegant in how all of uh, all of everything works. You've got these cool upgrades that you can do, and um, uh, tracks that you build. But you don't have to build tracks, but you want to build tracks, but you don't want to build tracks because then you're losing some of your abilities. It's like, I like what the game does, and I am terrible at it. I am the worst at and this I'm game. And I'm really good at it. And you are really intuitive at this game. I, for whatever reason. I don't know. I and I, For whatever reason. So I see the tracks. And I'm like, oh, I could build the tracks. And I build the tracks and I get stomped every time. But I love what this does. If you uh enjoy uh if you enjoy tiles with abilities on them, uh and um different uh, asymmetric asymmetrical abilities, um and you enjoy route building and resource management. You're gonna love Nucleum. Uh, I think this it's is heavy Euro. I it mean, is it's super a heavy. Heavy game. There is a lot of things. There's a lot of rules. A lot of symbols. Again, I don't think it's that hard. I've taught it several. It's not times, difficult. It's, it's heavy just, and it's just, deep. It's just like a lot. Yes. And you take these little bite-sized actions, but you kind of want to plan a little. So you're like, well, if I do this now, then I'll have this, and then, and then. Ah, well, I think David does that a lot with his games. That's Not true. that that's a bad thing, because that can actually be a, a really good thing, because I'll, uh, 
I think a lot of game designers put too much in their game just to do it. I think that uh, the reasons why he puts things in games tends to make sense. Um, and so I, I really like what Nucleum does uh, and definitely enough to uh, sit nicely in my number 10 uh, spot of the year Yeah, is Nucleum. And yes, see, we love you, David. Yeah, just like all the Defoob's hand motions right here. Like a lot. <laughs> like, what? like a lot. It's a, like lot. a lot. It's it's a lot. <laughs> you know, it's just like a lot hand motion, like time roller. <laughs> Got it. Um, I don't remember what I voted for on the Steam 2023 list of favorite game I suck at. Um, I know it had that I know it had that uh the category. Okay. It's because you you vote on the Steam Awards. And okay. so I can't remember what I voted for. Um but uh I'm sure I voted for one of them. <laughs> All right. I gotta get the trading card. Mm-hmm. Yes. We actually talked about it briefly already. What? Is Pirates of Maracaibo. Your number one game of November. Yes. Uh came out this year. Love it. I love Maracaibo and I love this. I love it. Uh, there was a stretch there where you were playing Maracaibo like every week, all the time. Every we were, last uh, year was your Maracaibo no, year. No, it was, Two thir- years? it was during the pa- the very early pandemic. We're like, what should we play? Oh, well, let's play through the Maracaibo <laughs> campaign, and we got through like ten or seventeen games. I don't know. We played like a lot. Um, and we haven't finished. No, we didn't play. We didn't. No. I played it with. I'm like, saying we haven't finished. No, but we haven't started. <laughs> well, I mean. You didn't finish. I didn't. I didn't know we didn't finish. But we, we were, wanted like, to play other things. But it's fun. I love Maracaibo. It's a game I want to play more of. There is an expansion that we need to still try. A cooperative expansion for Maracaibo that I'm dying to play. Um, so I, I actually thought this was an expansion. And then at BGG Console, I was like, no, it's a it's a standalone game. Like what? I have to play it right. We still played. We did <laughs> play it right now. Uh, and we so did. It's excellent. I loved it. Um, I think they did a great job uh, just reimagining Maracaibo. It feels very similar, but it's doing new Yeah, it things. feels familiar. Yeah, it feels familiar, but it stands on its own. So Yeah, I, I wouldn't get rid good. of one for to keep oh, the God, two. No. 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 If one does not fire the other, no, I'd love for it. sure. But if your problem with Maracaibo is that it's too long, then you should definitely play this. So yes. It's faster. It's It's great. Play it. Love it. Play it. Number nine, a game I have only played one time. Man, another super deep, deep. This was probably I knew you're gonna like one it. of the deepest games on my list. It is my number two game of July, which it it went in front of my number one game of July, which was fiction at the bottom of this 2023 list. That's true. This is my number two game of July, and I feel like after after sitting and thinking about it a while, I just really enjoy what hegemonic uh, hegemony does from Hegemonic Project Games. We did not have it at the time. Um, we just got we, a review. We copy. just got a review copy, so that will we be how to play. We kind of know how to play. Man, it is super deep. Really, it's a, it's a lot, and I think. And people have done analysis on this. So if you're playing with certain player counts, you've got you've got the worker class and the the capitalist class, and you've got the middle class, and you've got the 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 government. Yeah. And if you're playing if you're playing four players, you can then play. I think it says the government or the How middle or the state? middle class. The fourth the state. player. Yeah. There there's one there's one group that only that only comes in with four players and one that only only comes in with three and four yeah and two that you must always play with and i think it is the The workers and the 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 red and the blue are always being played that's why we decided to play the other colors because uh yeah if we played it two, if we play a two player we will end up playing a two player um but yeah uh in this game you it is a just a heavy deep euro um, and like I say, it, it has been, it has been a while since we played it. Yeah, we- so it's hard to remember all of the different interactions, but if you enjoy, uh, deep strategic, 
uh, Euro sort of games. Hegemony really fits that bill. Uh, there are certain things that only the capitalist uh, upper class can do. And there are certain things that only the workers can do. The workers are the only ones that can fill certain of these jobs. The middle class can do some small businesses providing jobs to the uh, worker class and can also provide workers for some of these jobs that uh, that are around. And you can train up certain workers to fill certain jobs. Um yeah, and then and then the the capitalist class wants things in the government to be a certain way, uh, and the worker class wants them to be the complete opposite way. It, it's and pretty the, highly thematic. And the middle class wants it to be right in the middle, and the state wants some sort of combination. Here's the one weakness with that: the state wants things to be a certain way, and so automatic and it's going to be a random certain way based on whatever card that the state draws and so if one thing benefits one side or another it's the game is already going to be skewed that direction so i'm a little worried it's each round it changes though oh and so okay so it'll i don't know what it is until so I, I, played, I won our game. That was the middle class. Nice to me. I think. And I, I think people said, after I played, people had said, oh, it's really hard to win as the middle class. And I came super close, I think, uh, because I had it right where I wanted it yeah. at the time. I didn't crumble. If I if I did crumble, I would have lost. But because, yeah, because, because you, I didn't, I barely hung to, on. Like, I, I did. And then it's like, oh, then I zoomed up because I managed to hang on that one time. Yeah. But again, I played it. I remember what I was doing. I have no idea about anybody else. I'm not, I, I was focused so much like, on like, it's like, what am I doing? It's so. Why am I doing it? I don't know, but I'm gonna try things. Exactly. What happens? I have no idea what anybody else did. They're so asymmetric and, that it's just like I don't. It know. is. It is. <laughs> it is not just asymmetric. It is almost like it's two different sets of actions completely right right. two or three or four different sets of actions right um but if you want a a really deep engaging gameplay this is going to deliver um so uh it'll be a people's alley for sure yeah i wonder how it works two players and that is ultimately going to decide whether this is a keeper or not that's fair um but I, i i i do love the depth that this game has I don't think it's too much. Maybe not, but it's one of those things like, are we going to play it enough to remember the rules? Or are we going to have to relearn it every time we go to play it? Which that is like is a question. huge burden, right? Because it's there's so much going on. Time Roller enjoys it at two players. So that's really good news. Cool. And at two players, maybe it's enough that where if you can remember the capitalist versus worker class sort of thing... Maybe, maybe it'll be good enough that it's like, oh, we have a third player? Well, hey, let me refresh real quick on middle that. class or yeah. state or whatever it is for the third player yeah um anyway looking forward to playing now that we actually have a review copy it's hegemony and uh published this year 2023 my number nine my number nine is uh also published this year from pretzel games called challengers beach cup uh i've been playing a heck out of challengers on bga so it would be a shame if this didn't make my list because I love challengers. I and I haven't played a lot of Beach Cup, maybe three plays or so. But did you change our video name from Challengers no. Two to Challengers? You should probably change the name because it is not Challengers Two. Yeah, it was Challengers Two when we played when it. When we did the video <laughs> for it a million years ago, it was before like the finished product, obviously. And yeah, matter of fact, we had a copy of Challengers Two at BGG Con. Yeah, I think the only copy that was yep. around. Yeah. Um, at at BGG Spring this past year, and yep. ran a sixteen person tournament combining Challengers One and Two, which we're going to do again at Tantrum Con. I'm very excited for so that. So if you are going to Tantrum Con and you're interested, you if it's not already filled up, sign up for that event either on the Challengers or Challengers Two side. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Now this says the number five game of May, but that is not true. Um, I gotta, I gotta call you out on your cheater, McCheaterson. What? Well, because Beach we, Cup. Well, we played, because we couldn't talk we about it in April. Put it in when we could talk about. And it. And I was not gonna do that. I know, but I'm not gonna do that. 
I it's it. not legit. It's legit. No, it's not legit. It's Whatever. not legit. It's fine. It's a fake. You are. It's not the number five from May because you played it in April. Couldn't talk about it. This. <laughs> I love it. But it is good enough to be your number nine game of the year. Yeah, there's player powers. Yes. So cool. So if you don't know what Challengers is, if you play it on BGA, you should you should play it on BGA. It's basically deck building war, and that does not give it justice. Nice. Because if I told you you would enjoy playing a game of war, you would not believe me. But it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yep. Uh, and what does Challengers uh, Beach Cup have that Challengers 1 does not? It includes uh, specific player power. So you don't all start out the same. You have your own little player power. Love it. I love it. I love it. So good. It's a great game. All right. Well, that was my number nine. Number nine. My number eight. Another deep Euro, because it's the deep Euro section of my list. <laughs> From a port of games provided to us by Port of Games, my number one game of September. It is Revive. Um, again, another deep Euro with, uh, in this one, you've got, um, you are exploring out of this center pit, trying to revive the world, I guess. And uh, by doing that, you've got to like, uh, flip over tiles explore. and explore and get bonuses based on where you set your uh, pieces. You can uh, build onto little ruin sites. You can mine certain locations. And uh, uh, no, it is not Moana the board game. <laughs> no. <laughs> it kind of looks like that from the cover. <laughs> it does, actually. Um and then you're trying to get out to the edges of the board where you can drop one of your crystals and say, I want this end game bonus to activate. And uh, I, I, I just really enjoyed both of our plays that we have had with this. Now, both of our plays were two players. Um, I would like to see what happens with more players. I'm not really good at making the three resource track move well enough so you've got a, a green track and a, a white track and i think an orange track um and you're trying to advance out as far as you can get whenever you encounter one of these little bonuses boom you're going to get that bonus some of the bonuses require that you get two tracks together and like it's like space five on white and 12 on green boom that's and if you don't get one or the other you're not getting that bonus and so it's really hard to actually get these things to advance the way you well, want you them to really focus on some some things yes you do not do it all like you can't be a great you can't at do it all. you can't be great at the tracks you can't be great on unlocking your abilities you can't be great at everything you have to focus and each player has abilities to help you focus a little bit. So. And I'm like, squirrel! <laughs> I know, I know. There's too many things you want to do, right? <laughs> um, so the cards have a really cool mechanic where you are placing things for the top ability or the bottom ability, and uh, certain things will give you uh, resources, and certain things will give you abilities. Multi, Again, one of my favorite things, multi-use cards. Um Got multi-use cards. It's good to go. Tracks? Love tracks. Um, you know, tile exploration. I love exploration. I love tile management. And hey, if you explore it, you get to put it wherever you want in that spot, which it has made the difference in the games that we have played. Oh, it's like, sure. oh, hey, there's a mine here. Let's turn it away from staff and towards me. Yep. So, and you're like, no, my cola. My cola. Multi-use cards, yes. Yep. Top or bottom. Top or bottom. Exactly. Top or bottom side. It's a great game. It showed up on my list last year because I managed to play it at BGG. You did, on, like, and it was in your top 22 games of 2022. Yeah, I believe it was. So. Yes, it, I, I did look. I was like, why is Revive not on your list? Oh, it. it's on last year's list. And I, I did look. Yeah, because I played it at BGG. Con. I think you're on number 15 on your list. But it would have been higher had I no, played it's over it. Here. Like, since actually. then, this year, we've played it a whole bunch. And I'm like. This is so great. You can actually see it. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go there, and then you go over there, and then you like scrolly, scrolly. Oh. How about your number 18 game 
of yeah. last year. So, yeah, it would be higher. Had I, I only had played it the one time, so it's hard to rate something after yes. one play. But we've played it a bunch this year. I'm like, this game is great. I so saw Challengers was like playing it, and we have this expansion. I've been dying to play. What? So I'm, I'm like, really want to play it. I did not know that. I know we should do that soon before you forget all the rules. I'm not gonna forget all. The- all the rules. Um, I saw I saw that can that challengers was like number twenty on last year. So challengers has really gone up. Uh, that, your, oh, yeah. Because you played it a bunch on VGA. I'm highly obsessed. You with are that. in love with challengers. Well, yeah. So again, the more you play something the more you the more you get to play something, I feel like the more you're gonna like relate to it and enjoy it. Like if you want to keep playing it. Like yeah. I keep I keep wanting to play challengers, so Therefore, it's like, oh, I'm really liking this game. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Splitty says, so how do you feel about Mystic Veil? Vale? We enjoy Mystic Veil. Vale. We have yeah. all of the expansions. We got that big box. Console. I enjoy putting the little plastic cards in there. The only bad thing is set up and tear down of like, oh, you need to put these cards in and take these cards out and, you know, unslide all the cards and resort everything. That said, it is super fun. Yeah. An electronic version would be even more fun. It's it's on um, Yukata. Yes. So you can play in there. Yes. That is my number eight, Revive, provided to us by Aporta Games. Yep. Your number eight. My number eight is Nucleum. I already spoiled it. From Board and Dice. Came out this year. It was my number one of September. Yes. This game I've played mm, five times six times five times i don't know something like that and the more i've been playing it the more i've been liking it like i said just said like after my first play i was sort of lukewarm on it um but then playing it again i'm like you really start to see like cool things that are happening in this game and it's a lot not gonna lie it is a lot so i'm not like big on like route route delivery or whatever I guess I said I said route. I'm like that's not right. <laughs> this is definitely a route. <laughs> I said tried though. <laughs> uh, so it's not really that because you're using anybody's tracks, which yes. is which is, and that is my failure. <laughs> that's a it's a good thing for me. That is where I fail. So I build tracks. But the best thing about this game are the little tiles. That choose your action. I love those little tiles. I love the little tiles. So here's the problem. I love the tiles. When you build those tracks, you lose those abilities. And I build tracks for her and I lose those abilities. And so she destroys me. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. And Dan says, you have to use your tracks a lot of the time. Exactly. No, but what I like about it is that you're not locked out. I'm not building your tracks. You're not locked out of an area. Like if Dan was like, I'm going to build here, here, and here and lock me out. Well, no, you don't lock me out. I still can use so, that. So here is Steph's big pet peeve. I hate being locked <laughs> out. <laughs> this, if you want to know the, the there, are, there are three mechanics Steph hates, though she she has been known to play them. Yes. But there are also certain things that Steph is like Meh, on. Yeah. Race games. Yeah. Area control games. Though she will play both. Yeah, there's some and good games too. and take that games and games where you can get locked out. And games where there are um bonuses for using other people's things because she complains that nobody uses my nobody thing. Uses no. my stuff. <laughs> there it is. It's you true. hear it. <laughs> This is one of Steph's and hospitals and and zombies and hospitals and spiders. Oh my! Yes. Uh, so the zombie hospital spider game with area control and a race mechanic and take that and where you can get locked in out traders. or locked in since it's a zombie spider hospital. Oh gosh. Um. <laughs> Sounds like I don't like games, but I do. <laughs> but. <laughs> But that's what gets her about about things. And she loves that you can't, that Nucleum fixes that for you. It's like, oh, I can use your track. Yeah, exactly. Great. And you get nothing for it. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe this game just clicks with me because yes. I, I think I've won every game I've played. Yes, yes, you have. I don't, I don't know why. But... but see, here's the thing. We have equal amounts of plays currently, right? 
So the the unequalness of like next station London, next station Tokyo, chess, whatever, would not apply here. She just kills me because she's just that good at it. That I don't mind getting the snot kicked out of me. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. Um, so that that is why it's so high on both of our lists. Yeah. Nuclear making both of our list. Me at number 10. Steph at number 8. Good times. Approved. Approved. For definitely. <laughs> All the games approved. Yes, your number 7. My number 7 game. We've already talked about. So another uh, All the Games Approved uh, <laughs> uh, list is Challengers Beach Cup. Provided to us by Pretzel Games. This was not on my April list. But was on my April list because I couldn't talk about it. There it is. Hey, Mass. Um, super fun. We've already talked about it. Um, if you enjoy uh, deck building, deck culling, drafting, uh, and then just sitting back and seeing how your deck performs, this is for you. Uh, like I say, it is like war, but not like war. You're going to play a card you know, blind from the top of your deck, and you're going to do what's on the card. So it's not just like plain old boring war. Where's my card versus your card? Um, if you haven't tried it, and but you've avoided it because it sounds too light, don't avoid it. Play it. It's on BGA. Um, and uh, totally fun. Yeah, that's great. Hello, Masmo. Um, all right. Uh, yes, the great split was on the top twenty-three. On my top twenty-three, it barely it, it did miss your top twenty-three list. Yep, my number seven is my island from Cosmos. Uh, came out this year, and it was my number three in October. Uh, it's basically the successor to my city. It's much more, I, w I don't want to say complex. It's it's just more to it, I think. It, my city is very straightforward. You play through the chapters. They all take about the same time. In my island, because these are hexes and tiles Instead are placing, there's a lot more to think about on, like, well, what are your connections going to look like? But what I really loved about this game is that each chapter felt very different from one another. Um, yes, it, they did. In they, some chapters, Michael ruled in the very early time. And in later chapters, Michael got killed because Michael something. got none of any bonuses. All right. Because I didn't lose at the start. Right. I won the first, like... Half of the game. No, I won... Yeah, I won, like, out of the first nine games, I won, like, six of them. And came in second on three of them. And then I got nothing for it and died for the rest of the game. It was miserable. Okay, so it won't anyway. be for everybody. <laughs> but it'll be for me because I still really like the I, challenges. I like what it was doing. <laughs> but He did not like the scoring aspect. Note to, note to everyone who plays it, intentionally lose a few times. That's all I'm going to say. There's no bonus for winning. So just quit and lose. Oh, my God. Be a loser. Because if you don't, you'll get your butt stomped. Because there's no, there's no benefit to winning. <laughs> Be a loser. Be a loser. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, I, I think I liked... Quit while you're ahead. I no, quit before you get ahead. So they can't... They can't Tank. This is not your game. This is my number seven. Yeah, this is my number 100 because, man, <laughs> I right. wanted, I so much wanted to love I'm, this game. And, and I did, so I will be happy about it and other people will be happy about here's it. Here's the other problem. I, I was good at it. I was a contender. I was good at it. <laughs> and it was taken from me. And it hurt. <sighs> I'm sorry. If it shows up on BGA, I'm definitely going to be playing it some more. Mm. So, 
Hopefully it does because my city's on there. Mm. And my city roll and build is on there. I, I think they I think it was interesting what they did, but there's a there's a bit of a twist in this mm. game. And <laughs> Yeah, the knife in my back. I think I think other people will like it. Take it out. Other people won't like it. <laughs> so I'll I I it evokes emotion. <laughs> I didn't know I wasn't locked down at all. I so here's the here slight spoilers. No, you have been warned. No, if you like my city, if you lose, you get bonuses that the other players don't get. Later in the game, you end up racing for like getting a group of five hexes. If you don't have the bonuses, you can never win it. Never. Never win it. It's impossible for you to win it. Okay. All right. Rant over. And then that's that's the spoiler. You can now listen. All right. Well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your number six. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah. You don't have anything else to add to my city? My my island? No, you you ru- you ruined that. So let let's. If keep you going. like my city, you'll probably love my island unless you win early in my island. <laughs> I I wanted to love it. My number six game was uh you had already talked about it. It is my number one game of January. Clank Catacombs 2022 provided to us by Dire Wolf. Uh, super fun. I enjoy the hidden tiles popping out and you having to go your own way in these Clank Catacombs um, and just not knowing what's ahead of you. It makes it takes Clank and puts it to the next level, I think. Highly recommended. If you love Clank, you'll love this even more. Yeah, that's good. If I had normal Clank and no expansions, it would fire Clank with no expansions. And if we didn't have expansions for space, it would fire it, I think. But we do have expansions. That's my number six game. My number six game is The Almighty. Your number one game of December. Indeed. This from new edition from Korea Board Games. However, the original was 1975. Amazing. Didn't even know about it. Uh it's it, you can use a standard deck of cards for this one, but um this one is a great trick taking game. Plays great with five players, probably best with five players. Uh you are Basically <laughs> bidding to set the trump and you get to select a don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh <laughs> uh you're 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 bidding to set the trump and you're bidding to pick a partner. You don't know your partner, so it's a hidden role or a hidden partner game, which is great. It's so much fun. I love and it. I love, love bidding it. for a kitty because those three cards are going to make or break your whole game. <laughs> so good. Uh, I just, I think it's really... What are you saying? It's pressure luck aspect. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so it just reminds me of like Whist. I grew up playing Whist. And so it's... A little bit of Whist, a little bit of Teach You. Yeah. Um, a little bit of Big Three. Yeah. It, but it you just... haven't played Big Three. This is this is a really great card game. So if you can't play Teach You because you got five people, this is a great alternative for a card game. Yeah, I super love it. Playable at four, better at five. Yeah, yeah. Um, though I got to say, the neutral player Larry, he was uh, he was really good. He took a lot of tricks that night. Oh yeah, Larry the. Yeah. Larry the Larry the you, neutral player. You need at least four people, four to six players, I think it is. Uh, yes, I for, think you're for right. this game. You can play with six, but I think it's wonky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One player has to sit out, but they don't really sit out, but they do sit out, and it's just it's just wonky rules. Yeah. So, uh, it was a very imp- I was very impressed by this one, and this definitely I think this should probably head to the quiver. 
impressed enough. Maybe that... you need a second quiver. Yes. You can have one on each arm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like a double catness. <laughs> That's right. Um I think um I was gonna say something. I was gonna say something I can't remember. Oh, it was good enough. That we decided to do a video for it, even though we can't play it because we only have two players. So it was that good. Yeah, we still did a rules teach. We still did a rules teach. So if you don't learning, do that often, <laughs> you can just check it out. That's right. Your number six. My number six. Korea board games. Yeah. My number five. We've already talked about. So um, even though it was your number fourteen, mm -hmm. uh, it is my number five. John Guo, the First Empire. From sorry, we are French. Yeah. Um. As we've already mentioned before, um, all of those Euro-style mechanics uh, that are in there, I love. I uh, haven't played the original, but I should. Um, but I, I think this would probably improve it. If I had to choose one, clearly it would be this one, because this is what I started with. Um, <laughs> Whereas I've had this one since it came out. Oh, exactly. And it's like, okay, it, it holds that for me. Yeah. So. Which is why the other one might not ever leave the collection. It's hard to say. You never know. That is my number five. John Gore, the first empire. Yeah. Good game. Uh, my number five didn't make your list. Um, it is My City Roll and Build from 2022 Cosmos. This was my number one in May. Uh, I, I love My City. I love, the, I love the line of just like playing through these legacy type things. This one's actually not legacy. You can replay levels mm -hmm. easily because it's just a sheet of paper. It's a, it's a roll and write game. It plays very much like my city, but there's fewer scenarios. Uh, Dan and I played through the whole thing online in one, one go because it's very fast online. <laughs> you just <laughs> do it and you should do it. Yeah. And it, it's just so fun. I love it. I super love my city. I just started another campaign last night. I think it's like my fifth campaign of my city. Like, I love it. I love it. And it is replayable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you might know what's coming, but it's still replayable. The, 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 the tiles come out in different orders, and it's fun just to play it. I, it's puzzly. It's it's my kind of game. I, I like polyomino games. I think, you know, and so. And the lack of my city and my island, um, my city rolling build, not on my list, makes it sound like I don't enjoy these sort of games. No, I totally do. Um, these games are you right up. You played a my lot of my city rolling builds. So you don't even know what comes. That's correct. But what's cool about the rolling build is that you're rolling two dice and you're making the shape. Yes. And so you're you're kind of banking on is this shape going to be rolled so I can put it here? You shape, you shape, you shape. No. <laughs> so you might get the same shape and you might you it's dice. So it's random. I mean, it 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 works really well. Which is why it's totally replayable. What they've done is 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 great. It's very smart. So and the game's like super cheap. I mean, it's awesome. I, I love this game. So Yeah. It's it's not a surprise that it made the high not my high list oh, here. So. so two of those Cosmos games in your top 10. Yep. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Moving up to my number four game. Uh, did not make your list. Did not. Um, we did not get a review copy of this. And then Holy Grail went poof or something. I don't know. But a lot of those games became really hard to find all of a sudden. We managed to acquire a copy of Encyclopedia. Right. Published in 2022 by Holy Grail Games. It was my number two game in April. So we played it when we were up in Niagara. And somehow, I think, it was it there or was it at BGG that we found a no, copy was there. of this? It was there. So, enjoyed it so much. I'm like, you know what? We, sh we should pick up a copy of this. And then, right after that... We, we bought the copy we played. We, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so that so, worked out. Yeah, um, it it's it, it's like I say, we've only played it the one time, mm -hmm. um, and it's not on the streaming pile, not because it's not worth playing, but uh, we just haven't. We got so many games to stream for you guys, so many. Uh, but it is super fun. You are basically doing research uh, on these animals and publishing papers. And to do that, you have to get the enlist the help of certain advisors. 
and uh, using basically you're using dice for all of these actions. And if you didn't roll well enough, well, you can take dice from other players, but then you're going to have to give them some sort of an, of an advantage for taking those dice. Uh, after you've rolled the dice, you assign them to different places on your board. So you know the bonus you're going to get if uh, certain dice are taken from you. So if you roll a maybe a super high number, maybe you know you're going to put it in this sp spot because you want them to take it so that you can get some coins or some advancements of some sort. Um, I think it, it does that in a really fun way. There was a another dice stealing game and it's not really stealing but there was there was a dice stealing mechanic in black angel that i just did not care for at all because they steal your dice you get a crystal and there's a the way that that game ends is that if it ends a certain way your crystals mean nothing so therefore all the dice that got stolen mean nothing and that just totally broke that game for me this game does it quite well um, because I I like I like that there is some tangible thing that you can get uh, for you know people stealing your dice. Um, I think you just like playing with Nils. I do like playing with we Nils. We play with Nils, and he's so fun. And Dorfermanic with Nils, yeah, and lots of other games with Nils. And so <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, uh, Encyclopedia. Uh, if if you enjoy uh, dice worker placement Euro type games, Encyclopedia might be right up your alley. So if you can find a copy of it, um, you might want to snag it. Yep. Your number four. My number four is surprise. This is not higher on your list. <laughs> I am shocked. Actually, I thought this was a contender for your top game of 2023. I thought this was it. You know what? I went back and forth with these top four, like, like this. Your top four. It's like, a, it's like a, you could do this and they could, any of them could be at the top. Like, I love these top four so much. These top four are, My these, this is your gold right here. Yeah, I love them all. Yes. So, uh, yes, I, I thought Kazuka might be higher as well, but the other ones are just so good too. I mean, I don't know. Okay. This one is great. Maybe I needed to play it more. We did play it like 15 times or something. So we played it a bunch. Uh, and I've loved every play of it. It's a game that I could play at any time. But it's, it is definitely that. This is your 1D game. <laughs> one hey, one, one A, 1B, one 1C, one and 1D. That's right. <laughs> this is 1D. <laughs> Which we'll call 4 for now. 4, yeah. Kazooka. Kazooka. We talked about it with yours. It's just a fun cooperative liars dice type game and it's just fun to see if you can do it yes just get out it's always a good challenge yeah and when you think you've beaten it flip the board over that's all i'm gonna say it's so hard it's so hard <laughs> my number one from february so and worth every bit i love it love it thanks dale thanks dale his loss our game he hated it some people's trash is another person's treasure. That's me, I guess. And he is the only person I know that has hated that game. Yeah, exactly. Which he, it he, blows my mind. He Here's a he he usually thanks for MWA Kaser. Uh he and I usually line up on a lot of things. And he is a good critic of board games, being the uh founder of Opinionated Gamers. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Um but hated this one. He hated this one. Dale doesn't know what's good. Yeah. That <laughs> Dan and I also line up on most games. Um, and I think Dan enjoyed Kazooka. So, my number three game we've already talked about. Um, so, I I gotta say, I used a... a I don't have pre-made rankings for my games. I don't have a score of eight and seven and seven five for these games. So, I had to have a ranking program help me out. And surprised that this rose so far to the top, my number one game of August, Freelancers, a crossroads game from Plaid Hat. We've already talked about it. I remember all of the fun times that we had, the laugh out loud stuff about, oh, she drank bug juice. And we weren't even thinking about it when you did that, no, that you were a bug. Try it. You didn't say bug plus bug juice equals no, cannibal. Just, uh, you don't think no. about those things. And it, 
<laughs> we laughed so hard. Uh, we had... I thought this would be high for you, honestly. We And it totally is. Yeah, so, that, and, it did not surprise me. So I was a bit surprised that it surprised you. It's It surprised me because there were just... Everything from freelancers down to, like, my my middle games on this list are all just a good ball of super fun games. And this one rose darn near to the very top uh, of the list for me. And that's, uh, I was uh, so glad that it, did, that it did. Plaid Hat has uh, always has really good thematic fun games. Um, and, and this is no exception. Um, if you enjoy uh roguelike sort of, uh, uh, fun with variable uh, player powers, asymmetric player powers, and a story, and and a story, and um, a timer based action selection system where everybody on the table has to choose an action yeah. that they want to do, and you don't know what's going to happen in the next round. Does this complete our objective? Does this not? Are we going to have to continue more? Um, I think all of those things just really make this so enjoyable. And um, this is definitely a keeper for me and even more of a bonus that it is seems to be infinitely replayable um, uh, app driven. But uh, I do believe that you can actually uh, download a, a standalone copy, browser based copy of the code that should be good no matter what there's not you don't have to keep an app updated or anything um it is self-contained so yeah play it play it we like it so lot. much fun yes your number three game your one c your one c game which is going to be numbered number three <laughs> jekyll and hyde versus scotland yard from mandu games uh came out this year uh, your number two game of october yeah, October was a good month. Two game. Yeah, October was a, good October was a really. Most of these games are from October. So. Uh, I see. Dan Con was here, and we got to play. Some that's games. true. There were three, uh, three games in October on your list. Yes, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I love the theme. Love the theme. Plus, you love the original Jekyll versus Hyde. Yeah, not as much as this. But not as much as because this. this is co-op. This is co-op. It's a co-op tricking game. It's not a tug of war. It's a co-op. Yeah, there's a there's a I guess a dummy player. <laughs> uh, so there's like a dummy player, but it's not hard. But what's cool about that dummy player is like you're you and so if I was playing with Michael, me and Michael would both get twelve cards. We each have to put four cards into the dummy player's hand. So we have control over what we're putting into that deck. And that is still going to get us. It's going to get us. Uh, and so th this game has like 10 chapters and they get harder and harder. We we've only made it to chapter four or something like the base. The standard game is chapter four. And it's so hard. <laughs> it's like. Splitty says you shouldn't call me a dummy player. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it. It works you up to the basic game because there's different like concepts of the game that you're trying to get. But it's just so well done. I I hope it shows up on BGA just like Jekyll and Jekyll versus Hyde. But it is it is super solid. God, I love it so much. It's so good. I just I, I make... want to play it more. I got to play it last night. Five games with Jonathan, and I'm like, yes, I love this game. It's so good. I'm fairly sure it made my top ten list of October. Um, but did not did not make this list. But still, super enjoyable game. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So hopefully people get to try. Oh, I think somebody picked it up. I think maybe maybe Chad, 25th Century is doing it. I don't mm. I don't know. Someone's picked it up for you. So that would be great. I think I think that's true. But I'll have to But currently that. from Mandu Games. That's right. I, I I hope it gets a US release anyway. My number two game we've already talked about. Yeah. So we won't spend a lot of time on it. If you like trick taking games. Uh, you enjoy hidden partner games. Mighty from Korea Board Games um, is should be right up your alley. My number one game of December. Your number one game of December. My number two game of the year because man, I just love trick taking games. And I've already told the story on our December top 
uh, 10. If you missed it, go uh, check that out where I learned a game from some Chinese boatmen um, <laughs> uh, when I was in uh, in the southern part of China, off in the middle of nowhere, learned a game from them. It was very much like this, not quite the same, but very similar and uh, very glad to add this official version to the list. It's great. It's a great game. It's really good. It's mighty. It's mighty. Yep. Ace of Spades. All right. Your number two, or no, your number one B game, which you will number number two. Yes, that's right. Is? Almost Innocent. Which was my number 21 game. I was pretty low for you, but I get it. I've played it a lot more, especially in the past two weeks, because I found... It very well could go up. You see that these games do go up and down on our lists. Oh, for sure. So... I knew this was going to be at the top, even if I hadn't played it a bunch in the past week, because this is so my jam. I love... Deduction. Deduction. It's also cooperative. Uh, It's so I'm trying to clue in other people. It's kind of like a Sudoku kind of deduction, where you're like... You're making notes on the other players because if you can narrow in on like um, Jonathan's green, then you know it's not your green. And so you have to figure out the other greens. And you know, if someone, I know Michael's green over here, so I know it's not those two. And then. But which two are left? Oh, it must okay. have to be that one because so, yeah. it's logical deduction like that. And so it's really, really fun. Uh, and the puzzles get so hard. We got to the we got to a level with the queen, and she starts blocking the rows, and you're what? like, "How do we do this?" Uh, or you can give up an extra clue in order to give a clue in one of those rows, and she she's moving after every turn, so you'll maybe eventually get to. I'm gonna hold off on giving this yeah, information because I can get it's I, so hard. Yeah, but then you start getting abilities, right? So like, okay, these abilities will help us, and yeah, it just it opens up a lot. You know, if if I had played this more, it might have gone up on my list. It's it's a lot of fun. Maybe we should start playing it with the James and Susan, just one game every time. I think so. Every time. Because we've played some with them. They they know how to play it. That's right. It's because we started with them. Yes. So if they're up for it, I'm down. I love it so much. Uh, And yeah, it's, it's, it's a brilliant game. I can't speak highly enough about it. So moving on to... Drum roll. (laughs) <laughs> Our no, my number one game and your number one game That's this right. is not your number one game this is my number one game yep it was not a review copy mm. strangely enough and it's a game you're gonna love Steph knew but Steph knew what my number one game was going to be yeah uh and when when I was creating my list this is the first game I put up there with no thought to anything else I knew it and then my line number two said and then everything else. Nothing compares to this. Nothing one. compares to this game. I have got number one, and number two, three, four, five, six going down from there. This game could be in my top ten, top twenty games of all time. Ooh, from Ion high. Game Design, a game I've only played once. <laughs> I now own this game. He's been trying to get it played. I've been time. I've been trying to get it played, and the people who want to play it at Tuesday Group are never available when I'm available on Tuesday. <laughs> it is Station Fall. So, uh, my number one game of April, my number one game of 2023. Um, Did it make my list? It it made me... So, there are very few games that make me feel this way where as soon as I play it, I know I've got to have that game. Um, it takes a lot to impress us these days. Um, but I, the last time I felt this way was when we played Nemesis. I was like, I have to have this game. And it was my number one game of whatever year that was. I think it was two years ago. Um, back for our 2021 games. This game made me feel exactly like that. Um, in Station Fall, you are, um, on a orbiting space station that decides to all of a sudden tumble out of the sky and you have 12 minutes to get out. Um, the ish, the main issue is that you don't know who everyone's character is and you can move any character on the space station. Every minute you can take, uh, actions for one character. So when you're using that character, uh, that is what, you know, you're going to use their stuff 
Now, that doesn't mean it's your character, but you want to set your character up to be able to fulfill their personal goals. If you're the, uh, for example, if you are the uh, space station uh, captain, you are trying to save as many people from this space station as possible, and the captain goes down with their ship, so you don't, it's not a bad thing for them to perish in the destruction. They're just trying to get everybody else off the ship. So you can actually acquire that. You can achieve your goal without even touching your own character, which is good. Um, but once you declare that a character is yours, no one can touch it after that. However, other people can actively work against you at that point. So a little bit of negotiation, a lot of hidden role. Uh, you've actually got a backup hidden role just in case something negative happens to your primary character. Actually, at some point, you choose which one of those you want to be primary and which one is your either buddy or nemesis. Yes, you can have a nemesis, and you want to get that nemesis goal complete or that buddy goal complete as well to give you more points. Uh, the only weakness about this game, in my opinion, is the scoring system. You can do everything right in the game and then lose by one point I wish it were more like Nemesis in that if you get to a certain threshold of victory points, you have been considered as a win in your game. I think that would be better for me. That would be far superior. Yeah. And that would actually have made it probably on your list. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Hidden roll games, I understand, are not your jam, though. One or two of them did make your list. Um, so amazingly. And it is possible. Um, this game checks all my all my boxes with uh, with hidden roll type stuff. With uh, I love games with disaster management, and clearly this has disaster management. Me, it's chaos. It's all chaos, but I love Total it. Total chaos. <laughs> love it. Um, uh, this is a a always keep for me. Um, a I've only got two games that rate a ten. This is a very high nine. Let's just if if Nemesis is a nine, Station Fall is a nine, and they are two of them that could possibly be tens. So, uh, I don't. It's easy to compare it to Nemesis, but it's also very different. It's Nemesis. very dim different from Nemesis. I love Nemesis, but it's I don't love this. So correct. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't have a miserable time playing it. But you, it did not. I think I rated you. it a six. Oh so. my goodness! Never mind. <laughs> it's it's not a game I'm like excited to play more of. Like I don't I don't even want to play it again. I would because you love it, but I really don't love it. So. <laughs> and that's stage of all for my game design. <laughs> that's it's it's not my jam, but I get why you love it. So. I get why people are loving it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan feels about the same as Steph. I think the idea is cool, but I don't need to play it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Cosmic V did the same thing for Mighty, but put the happy faces. This one is the mean faces. Stage and fall. Um, uh, yeah, Jeff and, and Dan run in the same circles. Jeff loves Station Falls, yes. so just like I love it in that same way. So you'll be able to play it again. Jeff hopefully. knew I was going to love it. Oh, I knew you were going to love it. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think they played it five play times. It. So I'm like, I know Michael's going to love this. <laughs> Station fail. <laughs> Station fail. <laughs> uh, Time World says, my experience got better with more plays. Yeah, return the favor, Jelfia. Tell us how you really feel. Go ahead. Like I did with my island. No, I don't. I don't have strong pins. I like that. Okay, that's my number one. So your number one didn't make your list. Mm, it was. It was on that top thirty. Did not. It was in the, because I don't. Okay, know, but I yeah. Really if you fun. want me to, if you want me to pop the bubble before you even start it, I will. Fine. It's it's a lot like every other tile placement optimization game. It's it's just it's it's oh it's it's good it's solid but it doesn't stand out to make the top 10 all right is it it is in my top 30 okay 
That's pretty good. It did not totally miss. All right, fine. But it, there's nothing that sets it apart for me. Okay. My number one is Art Society. I love it. <laughs> what I love about it is the 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 my calendar cover. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, Look how beautiful, and it is beautiful. And Jelvia says, "Also, not no, surprised. surprised." I get it. It things like this have been done before, but it just comes together so nice and elegantly. And there's more to it than that meets the eye because, as you're placing tiles, you're like really hoping for like a specific tile. Like, and if it doesn't so come like, out, oh, why is this happening to me? And if it doesn't come out, uh screwed but you know then there's this whole like bidding mechanic hidden bidding mechanic where you're like i'm gonna bid this much to get this tile but you want to bid high to get the tile you want but you also want to bid low to get control over what tile goes to the to the like the value market so you know you're trying to manage these things as you're placing these tiles on your board yet if there is no tile you want well then you have to Take the opportunity to take my tile. <laughs> it's like it's yeah, I've done that and it's yeah. It's not for Michael. I'm fine. He he still put it in his top thirty, but for me, it's totally awesome and uh, it hits all the right buttons. It's fine for me to love it. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to like what I like. It's fine. I, I, I like it. He likes it. He'll play it. I'll play it. I won't turn it down. Okay, fine. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. And it plays really well. That is your 1A game. My 1A. But again, yeah, the top four. <laughs> Jelfy is given a Dan. Top four could be probably That's fine. That's re fine. rearranged. And I would still be happy to play any of these four at any time. At any time. Because I love right them. Right now. Right now. Let's go. <laughs> so fun. All right. For those of you who uh, only listened to the last minute, uh, here is our rundown of our best of 2023. My number 23 is Fiction from All Play. My number 22, Dwarf Romantic, the board game from Pegasus Field. Number 21, Almost Innocent from Colossal. Number 20, London Necropolis Railway from Spielworks. Number 19, Sides from Captain Games. Gal number 18, Galileo Project from Sorry, We All French. Number 17, Harry Potter Unmasked the Death Eaters from The Op. Number 16, King of Monster Island from Yellow and Flat River Group. Number 15, Kazuka from Pegasus Field. Number 14, The Great Split from Horrible Guild. Number 13, Path of Civilization from Captain Games. Number 12, Pirates of Maracaibo from DLP Games and Capstone Games. Number 11, Kutnahora, The City of Silver from Czech Games. Number 10, Nucleum from Board and Dice. Number 9, Hegemony from Hegemonic. Number 8, Revive from Aporta. Number 7, Challengers Beach Cup from Pretzel Games. Number 6, Clank Catacombs from Direwolf. Number five, Zhangguo, The First Empire from Sorry, We Are French. Number four, Encyclopedia from Holy Grail. Number three, Freelancers, A Crossroads Game from Plat Hat. Number two, Mighty from Korea Board Games. And number one, Station Fall from Ion Game Design. Yes. All right. My number 23, Vegetable Stock from Good Games and Taiwan Board Game Design. Uh, number 22, Miss Over Carcassonne from Hansen Gluck and Z-Man Games. Number 21, Clank Catacombs from Direwolf. Number 20, The Art Project from The Op. Number 19 is Beacon Patrol from Pandasaurus Games. Number 18 is Freelancers, a Crossroads game from Plaid Hat. Number 17 is Come Sail Away from Sashi and Sashi. Uh, number 16 is Rome in a Day from Alley Cat Games. Number 15 is Inside Job from Cosmos. Number 14 is Zhang Guo, The First Empire from Sorry We Are French. French? Oh. <laughs> Number 13 is Age of Innovation from Capstone Games. Number 12 is Path of Civilization from Captain Games. Number 11 is Next Station Tokyo from Blue Orange Games. Number 10 is Pirates of Maracaibo from DLP Games and also Capstone coming later this year. Arr. Uh Number nine is Challengers Beach Cup from Pretzel Games. Number eight is Nucleum from Board and Dice. Number seven is My Island from Cosmos. Uh, number six is Mighty from Korea Board Games. Number five is My City Roll and Build from Cosmos. 
Number four is Kazuka from Pegasus Field. Number three is Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard from Mandu Games. Number two is Almost Innocent from Colossal Games. Number one is Art Society from Mighty Boards. Yay! I will be posting uh, my top 25 with two extra in the coming week. Bonus two. I just need to write it all up. You know, all that extra work. <laughs> I thought so, you did it. No. I, ha- I have the top 25, but I don't have it all written up. Oh. With all the pictures and videos and all the cool jazzifying stuff I do uh, for a blog post. So uh, stay tuned for that. And hopefully you enjoyed this rundown of our top 23 games of 2023 that's right and uh if you are unfamiliar with uh our channel um we do top tens of the games that we play every month every month we play between 40 and 100 games (laughs) that are new to us every month so we definitely have 10 really strong games to show you each and every month uh month's rankings so on the first stream of each month, we will give our top games of the previous month. So you can join us uh, there if you want more awesome uh, videos like this. We do teaches and playthroughs of tons of games. We have about 1,100, 1,200 videos on YouTube, and you can find us on uh, YouTube at Board Gamer Steph. Or you can come join us. Uh, you've seen all the little chat up here. Um, <laughs> yes, come join us. Where you will see all of the chat comes from people who are visiting our Twitch channel. We stream every Wednesday and Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Central, unless we're away at a convention or whatnot. Um, but every stream, we stream three games or more every single stream. So right. be sure to come join us on chat where we play all, all the games. games. Yes, so definitely do that. Um, yeah, we have more games to play tonight, so let's get to it. So we'll see you guys at conventions. If you're there, say hi to us. Um, Be sure to stop us, yeah. We would love when people stop us and say, hey, we saw your video. We love to teach. We love the playthrough. That sort of, uh, that sort of recognition is why we bring you all of these games so that you can either learn how to play or figure out whether this whether a certain game is for you. Yes. Um, we're doing these videos for y'all. Yeah. So love it. Uh, so for those on Twitch, tell them that you love Senor Azul. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody loves Senor Azul. Well, I mean, it's really funny because when we were at Gen Con, more people recognized Senor Azul than recognized us because <laughs> it's like uh, Senor Azul popped up and they're, they're like, "Oh, hey, it's Senor Azul," and we're like. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I was summoned. Yeah, Cosmic Beat redeemed summons as Senor Azul. <laughs> what was your favorite game that you played? Uh, what game was my favorite? Uh, probably Station Fall. Oh, I didn't play that one. But it'll be your favorite. <laughs> if you say so. Everybody fist bump. <clears throat> we are wrapping this up. What was my favorite game? I don't know. You have to think about it and let us know. I oh, know it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he played any games this year. I don't think he did. He's Not slack- on stream. He's slacking. Yeah. I rest over there. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it was it was the one game that he lost to Jelfia at. Oh. Oh, yeah. He doesn't like losing. <laughs> He's a bad loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for those on Twitch, we will be right back with games. That's That's right. Let's go. Let's go.